Hey, what's up, everybody? We got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about some updates with the Cassie and Andor series. We got every confirmed and rumored Star Wars project. We're going to debate whether or not we would want to captain the Millennium Falcon or the Ghost. And, of course, there are eight big questions that we still have about the Disney Plus Star Wars series. And it's all coming up right now. You're listening to Head to Head, a Star Wars podcast. Two fans, two generations, all things Star Wars begins now. All right, hello, everybody. I'm Eric Vansel. And I'm Daryl Sanders. And we're your hosts for this podcast. So we got some bad news over uh, yeah, man. the last couple of days, didn't we? I'm hurt. I am. I mean, I'm I can hurt. imagine. I am, too. I'm upset. I'm actually kind of ticked off, to be Luster, honest. Luster, yes, exactly. You know? I mean, what's up with that? Well, you know what? Before everybody's sitting there going, like, what are they talking about? Why don't you fill us in? Yeah, so uh, just on yesterday, I think, when I sent it to you, um, there was an announcement that the High Republic books and things that we've been all been kind of chomping at the bit for is actually going to be put on hold for a little while due to, I guess, the whole coronavirus thing, and I guess they can't get a lot of stuff out. But I don't understand that. <clears throat> They're books. I know. <laughs> you know, it's like, dude. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the very definition of quarantining yeah. is writing a book. Exactly. You know, or whatever. It's like, I get it. You know, maybe they think, but everybody's ordering stuff online anyway, or the stuff is digital. When you were basically sharing this thing with me, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, no, I don't understand this. Yeah, me either. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, one, there are books that I think that will be um, really interesting, you know, especially given this the High Republic area, this is an area of Star Wars we've never read about before. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think that's really going to be a really, really, really good read, especially some of our favorite authors like Claudia Gray is actually helming one of the books. So to see that this, you know, it's, it's kind of making me nervous once again. It's like, OK, what are they doing over there in Disney that like every time we're about to get something good, there's a halt to it, except for the Mandalorian. Like, that's the only thing so far that's really pretty much gone off without a hitch. And the thing I don't understand about it, and of course, I'm sure we'll talk about more of this stuff later on in the show. But what I don't get is that, OK, the Mandalorian season two has basically been shot. I mean, I think yeah. production's been complete for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so they're going to roll that out perfectly on time. Yep, in October. Now, they already have a lot of these High Republic books written. I know they have at least two or three already in the can. Just release those now. So, and why can't they, and, you know, the first one wasn't supposed to hit till like, what, July or August or something? And then, yeah. like, maybe <clears throat> September or October, and, and then, again, in January. So now... From what I understand, it's been pushed up to January, but... 2021, yeah. Yeah, but I don't like, understand. It's like, just release the books. You could still put the promotion. I really don't understand, Yeah, it, it, you know, it what the deal me. is. Yeah, I mean, unless, I mean, what are you changing the story now all of a sudden? I mean, like, yeah, I, I can't figure out for the life of me, like, what And it's like you there. said. I mean, this is like a whole new era. This is something I was really looking forward to. Yeah. And, of course... You know, they didn't tell us this back in, you know, March or April. They tell us this like about a month or two before, before we're supposed to get it. And I was really looking forward to it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm really disappointed in that. Uh, but hey, what about you guys? What do you guys think? And oh, before we keep, you know, continue on, first I want to give a shout out to a lot of our usual viewers. You know, White Elephant, DP Dishy over on Twitch. We got, you know, of course, Dave Kazi, Darren Kane, all these guys. You guys may have noticed... We're not exactly live tonight. Now, hopefully, Daryl is actually able to join you as we are doing a premiere on YouTube tonight. And so we're able to chat live with you guys. Unfortunately, I'm going to be tied up on a live stream from work. So while you guys are watching this, I'm actually doing a different live stream. <laughs> but hopefully, man, you know, you're able to chat with them live. And, you know, if you are there, make yourself known. Definitely. Say hi and, you know, keep chatting. I mean, just because this thing isn't live doesn't mean that there can't be some real-time conversation. So with that, what do you say we go to the cantina? Yes, I need a drink after this. Yeah, I know, <laughs> after this high republic. All right, let's go. All right, what do we got first? All right, man. So, you know, one of the things that we've been, you know, kind of been talking about as of late because for a while, you know, we weren't he hearing a whole lot of information on, and now we're getting like tons of information. So now we're going back to Cassie and Andor. All right. So we kind of were on the Ahsoka train for a little bit. 
Yep. Now we're back to yep. Cassie and Andor. <laughs> well, that's because Ahsoka was appearing in virtually everything. I know. You know, dreams, it's kind of like, just... well, well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the thing that's funny about it is that it seemed like every single new Star Wars project or anything that was in the pipeline or maybe, you know, an additional season or whatever, one of the lines invariably read, oh, Ahsoka Tano will be making an appearance in this or whatever. And it's it just seemed like virtually every Star Wars project was going to feature Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kept expecting like, oh yeah, they're gonna make a you know episode ten, and guess what? Ahsoka's back, and she's sixty or whatever, you know. Right. So she's in the High Republic books. That yeah. We're getting. <laughs> so I mean, now now we're back firmly in Cassie and Andor. Which as, well, how's the production going on this one? Well, so far I, th- I think they're like I said they're still in pre production and you know yeah they not- haven't shot anything right, but they were scheduled. Like I know Obi Wan is supposed to. Start shooting in like January or February. Yeah. Now, see, with the country starting to open up now, you know, we're starting to see like different states and things starting to open up, namely Florida, where a lot of things are taking place. Yeah. And the Georgia, I read Georgia's, their whole production stuff is starting to come up. Yeah. They're starting to wake up, you know, and shake shake loose the rust and everything. So hopefully, you know, we'll be seeing uh, some more uh, concrete information. I hope we get like maybe a trailer or at least some shots of some things, you know, coming up soon from Cassie and Andor, but the newest news is that Jimmy Smith is actually uh, coming back to return to play Bell Organa, and uh, he's also, um, you saw him in Rogue One, um, he's, of course, he was still in um, the Revenge of the Sith, so. Yeah, he seems <clears throat> to be, and this also gives you another window as far as when this whole thing is taking place, because if you notice, one of the things about Jimmy Smith is Bail Organa. Mm-hmm. The Bail Organa character seems to pop up on some of the earlier side between episodes three and four. Right. Because, you know, obviously, right, he was in episode three, and yeah. he was one of the architects of the Rebellion. And it seems like up to a certain point, it's appropriate to have him in there. Now, of course, like you said, he was in Rogue One. Rogue One goes right into episode four. Mm-hmm. But I think that at least as far as him being really active... I think that it's going to be a little bit before then. They had actually said how long before Rogue One, the Cassian Andor series, was, right? Yeah, I think it takes place um, maybe like eight years before. Yeah, it was something like, like eight that. Eight years before Rogue One. Five, eight, ten years. It was somewhere in there. I mean, they actually mentioned it at one point, but sometimes they change it up. Yeah, and also uh, Alistair uh, Petri is also rumored to reply to his roles as uh, Davids Draven, Draven, um, who's also Draven, yeah, so the solo guy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yep. So he's actually uh, supposed to be reprising his role. Of course, we know uh, Genevieve uh, O'Reilly is coming back as Moth Mothma. Right. Um, that seems to be completely her thing now. Oh yeah, I mean she owns that thing, and it's mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Um, man, it makes you wonder, you know, if Darth Maul is going to make an appearance. <laughs> that would be cool. Well, I mean, he's... I mean, yeah, he was definitely around during that period, so... Crimson Dawn. Well, yeah. I mean, if they got Draven in there, and Draven was one of the... You know, before Maul basically said, okay, Kira, you're you're the one now, now that Draven's gone, mm-hmm. it stands to reason that if Draven's there, it would not be, you know, much of a stretch for Maul to be there. No, it, it wasn't. And he's another one, man. He's popping up everywhere now. Who knew there See, was so much to the mall storyline? Exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, was, like, I was just about to say, too. It's <laughs> like, who knew? You know, this is a lesson. Just because a character is chopped in half and falls down a shaft does not mean it's the end of the story. Yes. <laughs> As Palpatine. <laughs> As, yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, this is uh, this is really cool. You know, I love um, Jimmy Smith as Bell Organa. And it's funny because. Now, now when you see him in the animations, they animate him to look like Jimmy Smith's too. So it's like I know that's I think that's cool. so cool. Well, he's actually <laughs> been voicing because wasn't he in Rebels? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I mean, and he was doing the voice of it. I think it's great that Jimmy Smith is just so mm-hmm. you know willing to come in and reprise his role and do all this stuff. I mean, I think that's yeah. fantastic. And I mean, I've been a big fan of Jimmy Smith's for a long time. Yeah, he's a phenomenal actor, mm-hmm. definitely. You know, I mean, he's been in a lot of stuff that I like, but it was when he was in he was in the last season of The West Wing. He was also on 24, too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, he's been in a lot of series that I like, too. And he's just, 
I don't know. He's just like he seems like he's a really cool guy. So I was glad that they got him to play Bail Organa. And I never imagined. Like I remember when Revenge of the Sith came out. I was like, oh no way! They got Jimmy Smiths to play Bail Organa. That's so cool. <laughs> Once again, never imagined in a million years that we would be seeing this character in all this content. Yeah, I mean, you know, and he's had some pivotal moments, like him picking up Yoda and, you know, ferry him off to safety. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that I mean he's like... had some very, like you said, some key moments. And I think that one of the things that's really cool about it is the fact that, again, just like you had talked about the whole mall storyline, mm -hmm. who knew that Bail Organa had so much to do? Well, I honestly would love to see something more about him, like just his stuff when he went to Alderaan and just like how he, how Leia grew up. I mean, that would be an interesting story, too. Just to kind of see that, I, if you want to do like a political thing, yes. I think that would be really cool because you can really focus on that aspect of, you know, in episode four, you know, the the old Republic, I mean, the Republic was still barely holding on. And so, you know, of course, you hear that line from, you know, talking the last remnants of the Republic had been swept away. Mm -hmm. So... And Vader and everybody was still trying to, even in uh, what Rogue One, you know, they were still trying to hide the Death Star from people. They was like, look, you know, we're just going to say it was a mining accident. And, <laughs> you know, so doing all that whole period of time, you know, Bail, Bail Organa had to be kind of at the forefront of things. Well, there's even in the novels. Yeah. You know, a lot of the Star Wars books, he's featured pretty prominently, depending on what the book is. So there's a lot for him to do. He's one of those guys that he couldn't necessarily get his own series. Well, you almost could maybe, but he's one of those guys that would definitely be part of an ensemble cast or he would just pop up in multiple series or storylines. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily do a, a, a series strictly on him, but just the events that would encapsulate him. Yeah, so, yeah. Like if you did a political thing and kind of just kind of showing like the landscape of what was going political-wise, I almost make like a West Wing version, I guess, in Star Wars, which we've always said those different types of yeah, genres. Yeah, the genre thing. The genre thing. That so, I, I'm so big on. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you could do something like that, and, and that would be a good point because now you're at the end of the Clone Wars, but now you're in this weird kind of space, no pun intended, but, you know, so now you're kind of in this weird, you know, space where you're trying to figure out, like, okay, how are we going to rebuild the Republic? But then you got this whole emperor thing coming around and then you're hearing whispers of all this different type of stuff. So which Cassie Andor starts to factor in, you know, to that whole, uh, that whole that well, whole it, regime, I it guess. It really, I mean, I guess it shouldn't surprise me that much because obviously this is going to cover Cassian Andor and it's going to cover the, I should say more the, the part of him as a rebel soldier. Mm -hmm. And obviously Bale being one of the architects, like I said, of the rebellion, it makes sense that, you know, he would play a role in this. But at the same time, it wasn't necessarily a given that he would be in it. You know, I mean, there was a part of me that was actually surprised that he was announced for it. Yeah, I mean, you know, because, I mean, you, you could probably do it without him, but I think yeah. it adds more weight in, like, continuity with just having him around and, you know, probably sending him on different missions and things like that. So, Well, it makes you wonder who else is going to pop up because, well, yeah, you know, like look you at said. The Mandalorian, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> up until, like, maybe a couple of months ago, you know, you might have heard about a person here and there. But then it just seems like lately, every other day, we're getting some new major character being announced to to be crammed in this season, too. And they could do that the closer it gets to Cassie and Andor. Okay, we get Jimmy Smits. Who knows who else is going to be in it? Yeah. Um, They could cast a young Leia. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, a young Leia. Um, it seems like you would almost have to. I mean, if you're going to expand beyond Rogue One, because Rogue One told a very definitive story mm -hmm. in a very narrow window of time of time yep. in the saga, let's just say. But if you're going to expand this into a series, especially if it's going to be multi-seasons... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to ask, where, where's Leia? Yeah, you would almost have to have her in there. Yeah. I mean, look, they even put her in the last... Well, then again, it was leading right up to episode four, but well, still, yeah. and she's a, so prominent in mm -hmm. the Senate and everything that it just seems like you would almost have to have her in there. Sure, definitely. I mean, I could even see her even, I could even see Cassian, they might even try to make Cassian like pine for her or something like that. Like, oh. I don't know if I would really want that. I wouldn't want it either. But I, I mean, I could you're see, right. I they could, could see it happening. They could do it. I, well, I could see, 
Honestly, this would be cool. <laughs> he could probably try it in typical Leia fashion. She shoots him down. You know, I mean, that's. No, that would be fun. Yeah. Just but because... I mean, the other thing, too, <laughs> that I was thinking is what they could do is they can have her in it and maybe she appears, you know, in just a few episodes scenes, or yeah. key scenes or whatever. Because, again, you have to wonder when they would announce this. They, I mean, there's a while before we're going to get Cassie and Endor, so there's plenty of time to actually announce mm-hmm. pretty much who I'm sure are going to be a ton of different cast members. Definitely. <laughs> right? So, I mean, I'm I'm thinking that Leia would be the one that they would want to... I think announced maybe last. And I also wonder how long this Cassie Andor series is going to go. Yeah, like, that how too. Long, right. You know, into this, are we going to you know get into? Is it going to be like a like a one season thing? Well, and that's what people are speculating about Obi Wan. Is it yeah. Obi Wan? They keep calling it a limited run, mm-hmm. and so what does that mean? One season? Yeah, that's what it would seem to me. Yeah, I could probably see maybe Obi Wan because you can't give him too much long of a season, I guess, because it's like. It would depend on what they did within the season. I could see as many as many as three. I would be hard pressed right. to see and him go beyond saying. three. And I was gonna say that I was like, between one to three, you can wrap his thing up. And you the can. thing is it would depend on how much time there was, right? So depending on how much time was covered between say episode one and I don't know, eight or ten of season one, mm-hmm. it's like what are you having him doing and how much time is covered? Yeah, right. Because if you cover too much time, then you're running into four, right? So you gotta, you have to decide first of all how many seasons do you want of the show. Ideally, you mm-hmm. can always get canceled. But the thing that really kills me is when, what did they say? Like, was either the Mandalorian or oh yeah, something was renewed for season two. I'm like, well, okay, let's review here. It's a Lucasfilm production on Disney Plus. Is there really any danger of this thing getting canceled? I mean, hey, yeah. it is the world of Kathleen. <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy would pull the plug on it before <laughs> Disney would. Right. <laughs> but I, I'm i actually pretty excited about the whole Jimmy Smith thing. Yeah, me too. Because it's, it's just nice to have him. I actually really loved him in, in Rogue One. I thought that they used him. They used him sparingly, but they used him perfectly. Yes, Rogue One, and even in uh, Revenge of the Sith. I mean, like I say, he he had those moments. Um, you know, when he tried to go to the Jedi Temple, and we always mm-hmm. quote that, and so it is. And so it is. <laughs> Still, like the best line for yeah. him. So you know, you had that moment. Of course, him. You know, going to kind of help pick up Yoda, um, and then of course that whole conversation they had walking down that corridor when there was you know Bail, uh, Obi Wan, and Yoda. Yep. You know, as they're, as they're kind of figuring out, okay, well, what are we about to do now? And then, of course, like in Rogue One, you kind of see them, all right, well, you know, hey, you got your Jedi friend, you know. So it's, <laughs> so it's just still like That all- was the thing that was really cool is how they were foreshadowing that whole Obi-Wan thing and why Leia went to him. Yeah. See, that's what I thought that they did really brilliantly was they mm-hmm. set that up. Yeah. Without you even realizing it first, but then you're just like, oh, that's why she went to him. Because ever since I was six years old, and I'm watching this, right? Well, how does she know about him? Yeah, it's like, you know, and years ago, you served my father during the Clone Wars. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> In fact, at first, I thought she she was saying Colonial Wars, and she just said Cologne Wars or something. You know, <laughs> like, I didn't even catch that until actually, I'm embarrassed to say, years later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's kind of like, okay, years ago, you served my father during the Clone Wars. What? What? Right. You know, this is add to the list. What's a Darth? What's a Grand Moff? What, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the dangers of being dropped right in the middle of a story. Yeah. You know, as you have no idea what's going on in the context. So one of the things that I thought is, look, if you're going to make a movie that is about stealing the Death Star plans and all this, and it's obviously going to lead up to four, what a perfect opportunity to sneak in a little bit of context. Mm -hmm. Because as you and I often talk about, we even said after, you know, if you watch four right after you watch three, it, it changes the movie. But it really changes the movie when you see Rogue One first. Yeah. You know, or even Solo. There's all kinds of different things. Now, of course, it opens up a bunch of, I guess you can call them plot holes, but uh, questionable gaps. Let's put it that way. <laughs> let's put it that way. Let's, let's call it questionable gaps. 
Like, for instance, Chewbacca, when he meets Obi-Wan, you could make the argument that there's a bit of familiarity there when they're talking at the cantina. Mm. Or maybe not. (laughs) You know, I mean, because you would think, like, Chewbacca would be like, oh, yeah, or Yoda. You know, once again, you and I talk about this all the time. Well, Chewbacca never met Obi-Wan, though. Well, yeah, yeah. But he met Yoda, and he yeah. fought alongside a ton of Jedi. And so when Han's like, well, I never saw anything, it's like, dude, didn't Chewbacca ever tell you about this whole adventure Actually, he had really, with 10,000 Jedi? Well, not really. Cause, well, No, now it's Duel of the Fates all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it depends because... You know, and watching, it's funny that you mentioned this because, like, I'm actually in the middle of watching Revenge of the Sith. I was like, you know what? Some... <laughs> Did I interrupt you? It's like, oh, man, I got to go do this show. <laughs> actually, yes. No. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it's cool because it's like, you know, there's watching this whole, you know, watching it and they, have, they made the decision, okay, Yoda's like, I'm going to go to Kashyyyk. So Yoda's pretty much dealing with all the generals and stuff like that. And, like, Chewbacca was pretty much probably like a kid but he was on he was only dealing with the actual clones he wasn't Did you actually... forget the part where it's goodbye tarful goodbye chewbacca no <laughs> <laughs> but granted I'm... he wasn't wielding his lightsaber at the time but he could have just been this little green thing that he Frog. met <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i mean but i mean come on man it stands to reason that he knew who he was well i mean it's probably like and he knew about jedi well, I mean, I'm sure they they knew about the Jedi, of course, but I think that, um, you know, I mean, it's depending on what was going on. I mean, like, in how old. But it seemed like Chewbacca was pretty high up. Why would he have been with Tarful? Well, it could have been like, honestly, it could have been like one of those servants type, like working like a personal assistant kind of person, you know. We don't yeah. know the relationship, I guess, or the hierarchy of Chewbacca at that time, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, I can hang with that. And it was like a good buy. It's like, hey, I, I saw the dude for like two minutes and he was gone. I mean. Well, but I mean. <laughs> you know, it's like he hopped in his little, you know, Mork and Mindy little <laughs> rocket and, <laughs> <laughs> and got out of there. Well, but here's the thing. I think, and I could be wrong, because once again, all this stuff was left just vague enough that we can have a conversation like this. True. And. You know, one of the things that George Lucas I don't think is doing is like checking off, okay, I got to, some of the stuff he was, and some of the stuff he even brought in from the old Legends or Expanded Universe in order to make the fans happy, but there's enough in there that there's speculation. So you can, you can figure some of this stuff out. And one of the things is, you notice, you never really see what Obi-Wan and Chewbacca are talking about. They're oh, they're talking the in the cantina, and then Chewbacca leaves, and then Obi Wan's like Chewbacca here as a you know, mm-hmm. is like co pilot of a ship or whatever that can get us out. But I mean, you know, there could have been all kinds of like, hey man, you know, it's good to. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that he had just whipped out his lightsaber and cut, basically, Walrus Man's arm off. <laughs> so, that was another thing that I thought was a little strange too. It's like, okay, you're. I guess, yeah, somebody could have just gotten a lightsaber, but he's wearing Jedi robes, and he's using a lightsaber. He's not exactly being very inconspicuous. True, but I think, you know, once again, I think everybody kind of figures the Jedi are just dead anyway. Well, I mean, you could make the argument that Order 66 has essentially been deemed complete. Mm -hmm. That's basically what you're saying? Yeah. That's what you're sticking with. (laughs) (laughs) That's cool. But it's one of those things that I think that they can open some of this more up in the Cassian Andor series, too. Sure. This is one of the things that I'm wondering how they're going to deal with because, well, it was like, what, a week or 10 days or something before episode four that Rogue One takes place? Mm-hmm. And then this is probably like eight years before. Well, I mean- it's about like 30 years. Like, well, the Rogue One in episode four was like- well, the, the end, same. yes, but I mean, it's like the if oh, you take about the, the whole, beginning, yeah, oh, if you yeah. take the whole movie, yeah, 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 it ends like yeah, like right there. But I mean, it it takes place basically. You might as well say it's like within that time period, though. Yeah, within a few days, I would say a week, within a week. So you got to figure days. that. Let's just say it's an even ten years before Rogue One. Okay. So that would be about twenty years after Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. 
I'm pretty sure. I think there's 30 years between Sith and Hope. Mm-hmm. You got the computer, man. Oh, yeah. I could look it up. <laughs> you could look it up. But I just think that it's one of those things that they could do a lot of, maybe not necessarily exposition, because the last thing that we need is like every little thing explained or, or right. you know, you need to see a Jedi and everything. Like so far, I think it's kind of cool that we don't see too much in The Mandalorian, that it really does give you the sense of it's a different element of Star Wars. And I'm enjoying that. As much as I'm, I'm the lore guy. I love the whole Jedi. I love the lightsaber duels. You know, I really like the whole Jedi Sith thing. 19 years. 19 years. In between the two? Yep. Okay, so. And then Force Awakens takes place 34 years after the Battle of. Um, oh, is it really 34? I thought it was 30. Interesting. Okay, well, yeah. So just figure that between like. Eight to ten years after Sith is when Cassian's going to take place. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in that area. Yeah. So there's a lot that they can do because that's one of the... Usually any of the stuff that they do, like the novels or the comics or whatever, it's usually like within the first like two or three years after Sith or it's in maybe three or four years before A New Hope. I don't really remember anything taking place kind of like right in the middle. Mm, Yeah. So that that is intriguing. And to do it through the eyes of basically a rebel soldier, Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get a slightly different storytelling. Well, yeah. I mean, I think you really have to look at the... You have to look at the the landscape of of the galaxy at that time. You know, I think that's really what's going to define the Cassian Andor series is really like, okay, no different than the Mandalorian. Like what does life look like post Jedi or return of the Jedi? You know, and it's like, okay, well now you don't have an empire holding everything together. Who's controlling what, like how is the galaxy moving during this time period with there's no dominant rule where you don't have a Republic or an empire. Oh, unquestionably so, that's what makes the Mandalorian Right. Totally fascinating. So with the Cassian thing, you know, you're in this space where, okay, you don't have a republic. Well, the republic is still barely intact. Right, I know I know what you're saying. It's kind of like, it's it's really that It's like the, almost like the reverse. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like kinda, almost the reverse of Mandalorian. Yep, like, you're kind of halfway into the Empire's rule, pretty much, because by A New Hope, they've extinguished now, mm-hmm. at the beginning, yeah. the whole Senate and everything, and now the Empire is just in charge. But- it's still, with Revenge of the Sith, you still have the Republic. It's just that now Palpatine runs it and he's creating this whole grand army or whatever. So yeah, in the middle, it's mm. half and half. It's like the Empire still has to be careful how it acts. Exactly. Like that, they, they have to do things and, and look like, you know. Exactly. That's why I love the whole thing in Rogue One when Vader's talking with Krennic and he was just like, well, Krennic says, oh, look, we got this weapon. Let's just start using it. It's like, no, the Death Star doesn't exist. You know, it was a mining accident. Yeah. It was, you know, like Vader is definitely at the helm of controlling the the propaganda and how everything looks. Yes. Up front, you know, while because because Palpatine still hasn't completely revealed his whole thing yet. Mm-hmm. And so that's why, like, you know, of course, you know, they're very selective on how they really. Yeah. And with good reason. Yeah. Because I think Alderaan was the first actual like planet blow up oh yeah like you know yeah because i mean even with jetta jetta there was like jetta okay, was like a city yeah but i mean i think the planet still yeah was intact i mean it just like a scarif like it was definitely severely damaged oh yeah <laughs> you know some something like scarif was actually you know once again that area mm-hmm. um was it was destroyed but not the entire planet because, and that's when I realized like, Oh, they have to actually have different settings for this thing. I never knew that. I always thought it was just like just a planet killer. And that was it. But I didn't know they actually had like, okay, if you only fire up like maybe two reactors, you can just blow up the city, not destroy the whole planet. (laughs) Yeah. And they mimic that even in the rise of Skywalker when they, Mm -hmm. I mean, granted 
they basically took out the planet after a while, but not at first though. Right. So I mean, it it definitely does have like a <laughs> set for stun if you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little wake up call. Right. <laughs> Well, what about you guys? What do you think? Are you guys looking forward to the whole Jimmy Smith thing? I mean, I'm sure you guys are chatting away with Daryl right now. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to look forward to seeing that. Although it's weird because whenever we do the live stream, I don't know if it's a thing like we have to have so many subscribers or whatever, but it's like it never displays the chat in replay. Mm. It disables it. Interesting. Yeah, and I don't have it disabled. So it's kind of... It sucks because we can't, I mean, fortunately, when we're chatting, we actually put it up on the screen. So everybody sees, even on the replay, like what we've done, but it, in the chat window on the side. Mm-hmm. So if you guys actually know what's up with that, put that in the comments section too. <laughs> yes, you have to And if it. you guys like what you see, or you know, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, you know, because we do these discussions every week and we would love for you guys to join us. That's why on the times that we do have to do these things pre-recorded, we're going to set them as premiere so you could chat with us live. All right, what do we got next? All right, well, one of my favorite Sith Lords. Um, people have been talking about actually giving him a spinoff show, and that is Darth Tyrannus, also known as Count Dooku. Yeah, I would love to see this. And the more that I read about Count Dooku, like the whole Jedi Lost thing mm-hmm. that I read, and then, of course, his brief brief appearance in master and apprentice right you know i really would love to see that especially the whole dynamic between him and asajj Mm -hmm. i think is amazing yeah depending on how far back you go you know if you do the whole qui-gon dooku thing yeah i mean i would really i mean unfortunately christopher lee is you know passed on yeah that's the only and that's that's the problem i have because on one hand you could get some regal older guy to to play Dooku, but ah, he's just so yeah. Christopher Lee. It would be like getting somebody else to play Tarkin. And I mean, they, I guess if they got a young Christopher, like a young version mm-hmm. of Dooku, yeah. I could handle it. And that's what you know people are saying because I think there's a lot of things to Dooku's background that I think a lot of people want to know. Like, well, one, how is he a count? Like, why is he called Count Dooku versus? You know, so yeah, that, and I guess they could do that because you know, obviously, they explain all this in the yeah Jedi Lost book, in the Jedi Lost book, but yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of different things um, like that I think that are really interesting about Dooku, um, and you find out a lot of lore about the Jedi through Dooku's eyes, and that's the other cool thing too. Like as far as um, people who have gone on to the dark side, you know, they actually have like this whole almost like a memorial type thing at the Jedi temple about, you know, these are the Jedi who were actually lost and they call them the lost Jedi. So Mm -hmm. it's like, these are people who slipped away to the dark side and whatnot. Um, I think there's a lot of different uh, aspects to Dooku. Like, okay, well, how did he get with the whole separatist thing? And, you know, even in like, you know, Revenge of the Sith, like I said, I was watching it. You know, and he's like this political idealist. That's how everybody thinks of him. And, you know, of course, one of the big questions that everyone talks about him being a Sith Lord is like, how come his eyes never change color? Yep. He never had the yellow eyes. So a lot of people don't feel like Dooku was completely evil. Yeah. In fact, I in remember fact, we know. were actually talking about it one time making that mm-hmm. either a main topic or at least one of the things that we covered. Is yeah. that, is he because it's true. People hit us up with that all the time. Like, well, was he really a Sith Lord? Because, yeah, and, and I think you know, did, was he truly evil? And I'm like, well, I really don't think that um, he was evil. I mean, he was evil, but I don't think he was like not in the same way. Not as... in the same way. I think he was more of an opportunist. Um, he's well, in a way. I mean, he was, but he was still pretty cruel to Asajj, though. Yeah, and I think that was. I think. I think that was just the the Sith way that he was taught by. Uh, yeah, Palpatine. I mean, it was definitely. Uh, but I mean, you know, what he did was, and actually, you do make a good point because in the Clone Wars episode, spoiler alert, I know <laughs> some of you guys haven't seen it, but remember when Palpatine ordered Dooku to kill Ventress? Oh, in the Clone Wars cartoon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, he actually was trying not to. He was like. 
you know, because, I mean, he had discovered her when she was a kid or something like that. And he, even though he was kind of mean to her, it was, he was training her and, you know, mm -hmm. he didn't want to do it. Right. And you can tell he didn't want to do it. He tried everything in his power not to do it. Of course, you know, he eventually sent, um, oh, who did he try to get to kill her? It wasn't the Maul's brother, dude, because that was who Ventress actually tried to get to kill Dooku. Savage Press? Yeah. Yeah. But it was... It was somebody. But... But yeah, I mean, it, the the idea was he didn't really actually want to do it, though, at first. And if he was truly like an evil Sith Lord, he would have been like, all right. Well, see, the thing is, I think what one of the things that made Dooku so cool was that, like, you know, he was one of the the Jedi that went to the dark side that you could actually see. Unlike Vader, you mm -hmm. know, like Vader, we knew that's what he was. He just is in this whole suit. But like with, you know, Darth Tyrannus, you know, he's like, okay. And that's, and that's the thing is like, okay, well, when did he actually go by that name? Because everybody knew him as Count Dooku. Well, that's because, you know, he was a counter of Serrano or whatever, and it was like he... Yeah. And, of course, they do cover that origin quite extensively in, in Jedi Lost, but... Yeah. But I'm saying, like, okay, so we had, like, for example, like, okay, whenever Palpatine decided to be the Emperor, he was Lord Sidious. Put the hood on, he's Lord Sidious. No hood, he's Palpatine. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, it's like, okay, but even when he was, you know, even though uh, like on the Clone Wars, you will see him with his hood on and he's more ominous, he's still being called Count Dooku. He's not being called Darth Tyrannus. Yeah. You know, you do bring up a good point because like he's, his, he's his almost Sith name never is, referred his, to as Yeah, that. his Sith name. And no one ever calls him Dark Lord of the, not, like no one even knows he's a Sith. Well, what's weird is even the ones that know he's a Sith still just call him Dooku. They don't call him Tyrannus. I mean, I yeah. think that <laughs> somebody made mention of that name, you know, at some point. But it's true. They never really referred to him as that. Yeah. I mean, and then the cool, the funny thing is, is that he actually taught Grievous how to use a lightsaber. Right. So he taught him all the different lightsaber forms and stuff like that. And he was his actual teacher. So... You know, I just find that there's all these different things, and he even still called him Count Dooku. I know. He never called that's him That's what Darth I mean. And when that's you bring that up, it's like, you know, I never really thought about it until this moment, but nobody calls him <laughs> Darth Tyrannus. It's like, does even anybody know? It's like, you know, if that's, you're going to be a Sith dude, you got to, you yeah. know, you got to market that a little exactly. bit Exactly. You got to change your profile picture, man. <laughs> yeah. You got to do something. Or do something. It's like, listen, <laughs> so, when the hood's on, yep. I'm Darth Tyrannus. Yeah, it's like Grandmaster B. Yes. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, I really would love to see this, something with Dooku. I think he has an interesting story. Um, it goes into who Saifu Diaz is and, and the uh Well, Jedi that's the Lost thing. Book. It's like when you actually take the Dooku story mm -hmm. from beginning to end, I mean, from the time that he becomes a Jedi to, obviously, his untimely end in Revenge of the Sith, there, there's a good chunk of the lore that goes with his story. No. Saifu Diaz being one of them. The whole other side of Qui Gon mm -hmm. being another one, of course, his time with Yoda. Yep. You know, and then there's other little things that are happening along the way that are somewhat major story arcs, but involve him. Now, see, here's the here's the thing for me. Now, in Revenge of the Sith, there's the scene where, of course, Anakin is standing there with both sabers in his hand, and he's about to cut off his head, and then, of course, Palpatine is like, you know, do it. Now, of course, everyone like like Dooku looks over like in that horror, but did he even really know that was Palpatine? I mean, that Palpatine was Sidious. Yeah, I don't know. I would, you would think so. But then again, who knows? Because even Maul. You know, he alludes to it, obviously, in the final season of the Clone Wars, but I don't... Because Maul didn't know. Maul still, yeah. I don't think he equated Palpatine and Sidious. I think he just knew that Sidious was trying to get Anakin and, mm -hmm. 
you know, everything, but he never really connected the two. Yeah, and I think he he hid himself even from his own apprentice because I think in, with Dooku, it would be easier for him because Dooku already being a Jedi Knight anyway, he's already, he already knows he's a powerful Jedi. He's strong in the Force, and he's already kind of curious about some of the other things anyway. All you got to do is give Dooku a holocron of Sith teachings and all that type of stuff and just, like, learn this stuff. Well, and I mean, it's not even that. You, the reason why I think it's a good point is because if they knew he was Palpatine, that's something they can hold on him. Exactly. Like, I'll reveal who you really are kind of thing, and he mm-hmm. can't afford that. Exactly. You know, I mean, granted, sure, he tells Anakin because he knows, like, in 10 minutes he's about to take over the entire Republic. So <laughs> it's kind of like, well, all right. Even though I did think that it was really surprising. The way that he revealed himself in Revenge of the Sith. Who? Uh, Palpatine. Palpatine. Oh, how he did to Anakin? Yeah. But see, the other thing is, too, though, like, there's this scene in, in Attack of the Clones where it's like, okay, well, you know, of course he'll lose to the fact, like, okay, what if I told you, and he's talking to Obi-Wan, like, what if I told you that- Yeah, that the Senate's under the control, control of, of Darth Sidious. Sidious. So it was just kind of like- And it, you, you know, know, it's- <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could take that either way, because that could either mean- Okay, the Senate's under, like Palpatine included, is under his control, or he knows that Palpatine is, you know, and he's the head. So yeah, so I mean, it it that is true. I mean, you don't really know, yeah, exactly which it is, and I think that that keeps, and it's so ambiguous. Exactly, they never really reveal that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm like. Really, that's why I would love to see something like this to see if he actually knew. Well, what would also be interesting in this hypothetical Count Dooku series is if you had a thing where Sidious recruits them. Because mm-hmm. they don't cover that in Jedi Lost. Mm-hmm. They do constant flashback scenes like, okay, right. he is Count Dooku, the Lord Tyrannus that we know, but and they flash back to his Jedi time. And it there is a scene where he does run into Palpatine, I remember. You know, when Palpatine was just a senator or something. Mm-hmm. There is a scene where Dooku runs into him and they interact a little bit, but it's you could tell they're far off from you know, it's almost yeah. like the whole Anakin thing, like, oh, we'll watch your career with great interest kind of thing. It's like, mm, yeah, you will. <laughs> but they never really go into how did Palpatine recruit Dooku, train him and all that, and that's something that I think could be covered in that series that would be cool. Yeah. Well, what about you guys? So, since we're throwing every other character in the world could possibly have a series, <laughs> you know, I mean, in this case, Jerry the Jawa might have his own show <laughs> at this point. But what about a Count Dooku series? Would you guys like to see a younger Count Dooku? Would you like to see somebody else maybe take on the Christopher Lee role and he plays an older Count Dooku and we see it? What do you guys think? Leave it in the comment section or chat with Daryl right now if he's still there. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? All right, so next, you know, as we're talking about series, it's a perfect segue to actually kind of talk about all the different uh, series that are actually have been rumored and have been confirmed. There's a lot. Yeah. and I was almost stuff surprised that- when I saw that you came up with this. I'm like, you yeah, know, this could almost be like a major. I almost, I mean, it's kind of clickbaity, but I almost <laughs> was going to suggest we save it for that because that's something that I think everybody would be like, oh, okay, click. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, there's... It's quite extensive. Yeah, it is. Um, and we'll just kind of go down the line and we'll kind of talk about it, each one of these briefly, because it's kind of, like you said, it's quite a bit. All right. So the Ryan Johnson trilogy. All right. So that's oh, one. Yeah, I almost forgot about yeah. that one. <laughs> you <gotta> st- <laughs> so, is that still a thing? <laughs> yeah. So uh, before writer uh, and director Ryan Johnson uh, last shot even hit the theaters, Lucasfilm was excited by what the filmmaker brought to the saga, that they solidified plans to allow the filmmaker to head into uncharted waters, uncharted, uncharted waters with his new trilogy of films. Uh, so he actually has a trilogy that's coming out, for those of you who may not know. Um, in the more than two years since the trilogy was announced, no official word has emerged on when the series will move forward. Despite Johnson regularly confirming that the project is still on the table and that it was up to Lucasfilm to determine where it would fit into their schedule. The 12th of never. (laughs) So. I can't even imagine what it would be. Yeah. 
You know, I don't think it has anything to do with the High Republic stuff. It it would seem like that would be the direction that they would want to go simply because they're building this whole infrastructure around the books and comics. It seems like it's got to lead to a TV series or a film at some point. Like, it has to culminate in, in one of those. Yeah, so if you're doing a trilogy, I mean, it's got to be a film of... But of what though? Like, what are we? Who are we exploring, or what are we exploring at that point? Well, that's that why I'm saying. Like, well, what they could do is they could take the storyline because remember, it's carrying. It's actually crossing over, not just in a whole line of books, but also comics. So what they could do is, when the thing reaches kind of ahead, they can they could do a trilogy of films that either completes or continues a story and leaves it open. But, I wonder if it use, I wonder if it's going to use any of the sequel trilogy characters. I don't think so. I don't. First of all, I don't think Ryan just... Johnson would even want to deal with that. <laughs> I think that he wants to be able to tell his own story. I think that that would be part of. And this is, by the way, even before the whole toxic fan reaction to the Last Jedi. I think even if the Last Jedi had been a resounding success, mm-hmm. that he still would feel like, hey. Part of me coming on board for this is I want to just be able to do, you know, the, an original story, basically. But the question is, what would it be? Mm-hmm. And in what time period? Like I said, I mean, I think it would be interesting you know, like if they did a Force-centric, like something involving like the Prime Jedi type situation. That well, that was the thing. When the Benioff and Weiss thing was on the table, it seemed like that was going to be a whole Old Republic thing. Well, that would be more, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, and they could go that route, but again, they well, could do the Prime Jedi thing. You know, it really depends on, because you got to think about it, it's got to be able to carry a trilogy. It's not just like a standalone film. Mm-hmm. So what would have warrant that much, yeah, have that yeah, much weight. an entire trilogy? And... If it's an original story, how do you know it's going to catch on enough that fans would even want a trilogy? Look what happened with Solo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it didn't catch on to afterwards. Yeah, and even then, there's no Solo 2 in production. Right. In fact, they just, a couple of days ago, three, four, five days ago, whatever it was, it was the second anniversary of when Solo was released in the theater. Mm. And, of course, once again, the Make Solo 2 happen hashtag came out <laughs> and that that um i think it's john kasdan that's lawrence's son that that co-wrote solo mm-hmm. he basically came out saying look i mean we'd be all about it but nothing's happening it's no no plans for a film or a, a disney plus series or anything but you know everybody would be open to it obviously yeah all right, the next one, uh, it says three big screen adventures. <laughs> well, is this the one where we're supposed to get a new film in like 2022, 24, and 26? Yep, and that was supposed to be back in 2019. Game of Thrones co-creators ben, uh, David Benioff and D.B. Wise were reported, uh, reportedly developing a series of films, the first of which will occupy the first release date. Since those talks, the, the pair have left Lucasfilm entirely with no hints on emerging emerging about what the film could potentially take uh, take any of those dates. In addition to no official update about those release dates being shared, the coronavirus pandemic has seen all movies and TV productions kind of put on an indefinite hold. So if any, uh, if any project could be completed in time, possibly forcing Disney to update its plan. So, well, again, yeah, you know, who knows? And from what I understood... The 2022 release date is still on the table for something. And again, it's like, what? Especially now that everything's been somewhat halted. Mm-hmm. I really don't understand what that could be. The next one is the Kevin Feige. Right. And that's what everybody was speculating might occupy one of those release dates. Right. So, But they- once again, what's he going to do? Is he going to actually direct it? Is he just going to produce it? And... Once again, what's and see, this is what's so frustrating <laughs> to me about these projects is they keep announcing these untitled projects, and it's like, well, I mean, at least give us some idea of what it is. I'm not asking for a script. I just want 
Yeah, this uh, synopsis. If you're not even a, it doesn't even have to be a full synopsis. Just tell me who it involves and in what time period. And I'm good with that. We're going to do a bounty hunter movie, and it's going to take place after Solo. You know, something like that. Gotcha. Well, the Kevin Feige thing says, dating back to the origins of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Kevin, Kevin Feige loves the Star Wars franchise, whether it be tonal embrace of installments in that series or direct reference to the franchise's mythology. Foggy uh, himself regularly professed his love for the entire series during interviews, and that would only make sense that Disney owning both Marvel and Lucasfilm, Foggy will dip his toe into the Star Wars series. It's currently unknown what project Foggy is developing or what his involvement will be, whether he will be uh, directing, writing, producing, or potentially oversee the project, but with immense success of, craft- of crafting an interconnected universe at Marvel Studios, Whatever Feige's influence might be with Lucasfilm will surely help the Star Wars uh, franchise success going forward. Once again, could you get any more vague than that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, that doesn't tell us anything. Yeah. See, I think that Disney is downright abusive to the fandom at times. Yeah, I, this is why I think what we why we need like celebration and all that stuff is because it's like we need okay, this is when they need to reveal okay, what's actually been confirmed, what are we actually getting, who's doing it and we can kind of get that information. Well, and I would go along with that except for the fact that you know, even when they confirm something, then they just fire them when they're halfway into the movie. So it's <laughs> That's true. <laughs> even a confirmation is, is not really a confirmation over there at Lucasfilm. Yes, yes. You know, who knows? Uh, the confirmed Taika Waititi film. I think I said uh, that. Taika Waititi, yeah. Taika Waititi. I'm going yeah, to get right one day. That, and that's really exciting. That's actually, and that's another one, by the way, that was a contention for possibly the 2022. Mm-hmm. Because, number one, once again, again, it's a little frustrating. I would like to know what these people are actually working on. And these are the ones that are confirmed. Right. This but, is not even rumored. They are confirmed. So were they all confirmed? The, the ones I'm talking about now have been confirmed. Well, which ones were the ones that were rumored? We're getting to those. <laughs> so all these have been confirmed. Yep. The ones I've all the ones I've said so far have been confirmed. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's that's the thing that's and that that goes to your point though. It's like, okay, like if these things have already been confirmed, then it's like, okay, give us something. Like, yeah, you said, what's the problem? <laughs> you know, you know, it's, versus the rumor thing is like okay, exactly rumor. Yeah, I get that, I but it's like, what is so difficult? I, I guess if you look in the bigger picture of their marketing, maybe. But again, these are the same geniuses that didn't market the stupid solo movie until like two weeks before it was in the theater. <laughs> yeah, and it, this is after the whole toxic meltdown after the Last Jedi. Yeah, it seems like you would have wanted to get in right away and be like, look. Look, a fun Star Wars film yeah. <laughs> with characters you love. We fixed you know? it. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, so I mean, it, it's just one of those things that I just don't understand. You know, these are supposed to be professionals here. Well, yeah, I, and that's why I, said, I just think that, you know, not to just completely bash, but like I said, I just think that Kathleen Kennedy needs to not be the studio head. I think you just need to have someone like Filoni or Favreau at the helm so we can actually kind of get something cohesive and we can actually like all right here's the plan and i think they'll execute it well but uh yt yt is is a good pick because like i said he revamped and he kind of brought life back to the thor franchise sure i mean this is the thing he's got he has a handle on the star wars humor this is obvious because he directed was it one or two episodes of the mandalorian uh i think it was one i know he did the finale right yeah i think he did too so this is a guy that obviously gets it. He's a big fan of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let yeah, him do and, his thing. And the other person who's writing the script for this untitled movie is Christy Wilson uh, Cairns. Oh, that name sounds familiar for some reason. So is that it for confirmed or? Uh, nope. We got confirmed, of course, Mandalorian season two and three. Yeah. So two and three have already been confirmed. Well, that's good. Casting Andor, we just spoke about that. Yeah, well, we talked great length about that one. <laughs> the Obi-Wan series. 
Yeah, that's hit a few speed bumps, but at least at least we know that's going. Again, I think I don't think it starts shooting until January though. Because uh, I remember, even with the whole writing disaster, it was still like, "Oh, don't worry." You know, even though we had this big delay or whatever, it's still not going to affect the shooting date. Yeah, it says in the months that the project announced, it has undergone undergone changes behind the scenes <laughs> in regards to statement. <laughs> you're right in regards to its writers and showrunners, leaving the audience to speculate uh, when production would actually begin. Earlier this year, McGregor noted that the hope was to shoot early. Early next year, though these comments were before the series changed its creative direction. Yeah, you gotta wonder what that's all about. Now, this is the one that kind of got me. Are we still confirmed? Yes, we're still on confirmed. All right, I'll just wait until com- you announce it. <laughs> just announce it big, because obviously I'm not picking up on it. <laughs> confirmed female-centric series. Oh yeah, that's the one that I was telling you about. Where um, that was the one that Kathleen Kennedy just kind of dropped on everybody and. And Disney got a little bit ticked, and apparently there's this whole big battle going on behind the scenes now because mm-hmm. they didn't think that they would greenlight it, so she went and announced it, so that way they'd be stuck. Mm. It was a whole big political move. Yeah. Wow. You know, and I, I thought that again, as long as the story is cool, I think that that would be a really interesting project. I'd be curious to see that. Yeah. Well. Um... Russian Doll creator uh, Leslie Headland is confirmed to be developing a series, which the studio claims is female centric. Other than that, no other details about the project have been released. Yeah, they hadn't they hadn't said anything else. Though this announcement coming after those regarding a casting Andor and Obi Wan series would lead us to believe that the project might not be moving forward until late 2021, if not later. Oh, I would I would almost guarantee it's later. <laughs> But that's always been the mysterious fourth series that they were talking about. Now we're to the rumored. Ah, gotcha. All the right. The rumored ones. Yes. Well, and again, you know, in, in the land of Star Wars, they're all basically rumored because <laughs> even when they're confirmed, they're not really confirmed. So we'll see. This ought to, this ought to be good. So first up, Ahsoka Tano series. Um... Earlier this year, reports emerged that Ahsoka Tano was joining season two of The Mandalorian, played by Rosario Dawson. Neither Lucasfilm nor Dawson have confirmed these reports, though they have come from a number number of reputable sources. Oh, that's happening. I mean, (laughs) that thing has been so widely reported that if that wasn't happening, there's no way that Lucasfilm would stay silent. Their silence is their confirmation. confirmation. Right. With the studio likely wanting to reserve this surprise for as long as possible, while most <laughs> outlets, yeah, good luck with that. While most outlets are claiming that Tana will appear, some even claim that her appearance in the series is meant to serve as a backdoor pilot for a series focusing on the character. These reports emerged prior to the news that Leslie Hetland will be developing a female-centric series. Well, now you know I never thought about that. Soon, her project will be focusing on her on the fan favorite character. So they're basically saying this female-centric series is actually the Ahsoka Tano series. Possibly. Well, that could, <laughs> and that would work. And first of all, it would make sense that they would give her her own series, especially if everybody's going this cycle over her appearance in The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's a no-brainer. If if the Star Wars fans are happy, you want to pursue that. True. To keep the goodwill and the good dollars going. Mm-hmm. And if everybody wants to see a live-action Ahsoka Tano, and, you know, assuming that Rosario doesn't, totally blow it, which I don't think she will, then I think that that would be a fantastic mm-hmm. type of a thing. Not to mention the fact, it's like, what worries me, because, and this is another point that I was making earlier, maybe not as clearly, but you have all these different, seemingly unrelated movies, right? This this is Untitled, and you know this Untitled trilogy, and mm-hmm. you know this secret whatever... <laughs> It's kind of like, on one hand, you do want to expand the Star Wars universe. You know, you don't want to keep making the same movies about the same characters over and over. All right. But on the other hand, they can't just start going all random, where it takes place in all these crazy different time periods. And this is why I think that Marvel was smart when they did the phases. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's phase one. Here's all the movies. They lead up to this final. Usually it's an Avengers film. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we begin the next phase. And all the movies 
they loosely tie, you know, they tie in together with the plot. They're wildly different enough to be entertaining on their own, and they stand on their own, but you'll hear different things mentioned that reference another movie in that particular phase. That's what I think they should do with Star Wars. Yeah. You know, make sure that everything, and this would make sense, because if Ahsoka's going to appear in The Mandalorian, Uh now she migrates to her own show, you can reference some of the things that happened. This is the kind of thing they need to do. I agree. The next one. (laughs) It's like... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I really, I mean, I really do agree like, with you. You done? Because <laughs> if you're done, I'd like to move on. <laughs> Remember, I'm occupying this other box over here. <laughs> oh man, no, I mean, I think that will be cool. I mean, I, I, like, like I said, I think that's the perfect segue. I mean, if you already got like a strong female lead, like Ahsoka, yeah, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't exactly? And people, unlike Ray, people like Ahsoka. <laughs> <laughs> right. At least, you know, she might have been annoying, but now she's grown up and everybody's like, oh, yeah. You just, all- you never know with Star Wars, man. I mean, it, it just kills me because it's true. It's like she was like the next Jar Jar Binks yep. when the whole thing started out. And now she yeah, she's like practically the most like beloved Luke, character. She's like Luke Skywalker yeah, now. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's just so funny to me how that works. Yep. So, Ruben is next is JD, a JD Dillard film. I haven't heard about this. There's an old adage among Star Wars fans that you shouldn't believe anything you read until it's on StarWars.com. <laughs> this strategy sometimes... <laughs> Dude, I don't believe everything I read until I see it on a TV screen or a movie screen, like I'm in line for the movie. I'm purchasing tickets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This strategy sometimes proves accurate as rumors and reports have been debunked and by waiting for official updates from the studio. But a number of outlets confirmed earlier, that, earlier this year that slight... And sweetheart director Jay Diller, J.D. Dillard was in talks to developing a project for the studio. With no updates on those plans having emerged in recent months, it is unclear if those plans weren't as concrete as Trey Outlets had us to believe. If any of those plans may have fizzled out behind the scenes or if Dillard and Lucasfilm are keeping a tight lid on what those plans might be. Well, and, and again, you have to remember that this is something that is a regular occurrence, unfortunately, over at Lucasfilm. Because certain things that were almost dismissed for sure by fans as rumors, you find out were true. Obi-Wan. The Boba Fett movie was actually happening. Yep. In fact, it was about to be announced along with the Obi Wan yep. movie. Yep. You know, and everybody started speculating. Oh, you know, it's it. I guess it probably isn't real. You know, it's like fan speculation or whatever. But then you find out a couple of years later. Oh yeah, no, I was working on that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of other people, particularly John Campia, point out that there's a lot of things that are in development. And just because it's in development doesn't mean it's a guarantee or anything. It just means that, you know. They've gotten permission to work on it. Yeah, they got, exactly. You got permission to go and, you know, give me a K2SO standalone film or something and let's see what happens. What you come up with, yeah. Yeah. If it's worth it, then we'll green light it. Yeah. And even even if they like the script and they green light it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going into production right away either. True. So things change, and I think that you have to take this. Now, that said, more times than not, unless it's some crazy thing, you know, some fanboy dream or whatever, Usually, if there's a bunch of rumors about something, it's probably true. Whether or not it actually gets made is a different story, but the rumor itself is probably true. Right. So, I don't know. I mean, and it's hard for me to say, because, you know, normally I'd be tempted to be like, ooh, is everybody excited about this? But excited about what? What? Some untitled project in 2024? I mean... (laughs) And no one knows anything about it. Hey, I am glad on one hand, though, that they are planning on making movies still. Because there was a time where I'm kind of like, okay, after Rise of Skywalker, are we only going to get the TV series for a while? Now, don't get me wrong. That's cool. No, I, I never really, I mean, when you really think about it, I don't think they will ever do that. Because no, the property start- costs too much for that. Well, I mean, you, you, <laughs> there is I mean, that. You- <laughs> and the return on the investment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is true. On the other hand, though, you also have to look at the fact that Star Wars is is a film experience. It's something true. that was its original you know, medium, mm-hmm. and that's what it, it lives on. Now, it's true, though, that with The Mandalorian, 
they've gotten because of the unprecedented amount of of subscriptions that you get to Disney Plus, they're making all those production costs back. Sure. But and it is very film. Yeah. It's you know, with the whole new technology that they have with the whole projection screens and all that, which is funny because I'm watching all these behind the scenes stuff going, yeah. hey, I actually understand all this because it's it's sort of like an expansion of stuff that I already deal with at work, you know, like mm-hmm. LED walls and, you know, all different kinds of things. It's just utilized in a very crazy cool way. But in a lot of ways, they can actually bring some production costs down. I actually wonder if they might take, what do they call that room? The view, it's not the view, it's like the... They have a name for that stupid room that they're shooting in with all the projection screens. Oh. Oh, it's like it's right there. But it makes me wonder if they're ever going to utilize that for the movies. I mean, it's very well possible. I mean, why not? Yeah, I mean, for certain scenes, I could definitely see them doing it. Yeah, why not? You know, I mean, it's if if it's something that, first of all, what I like about it is the fact that not only can it keep production costs relatively down so you can really focus on story you could do a lot of different things and you don't have to worry about okay how much is it going to cost or whatever whatever it seems to really have done a great job in telling the story of the mandalorian but i i understand people could argue that yeah but that's you know a tv series it's kind of like on a on a big screen production it's different right but i don't know so what do you guys think? I mean, we threw out some ones that were confirmed. We threw out some ones that were rumored. And they're probably interchangeable, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> because the confirmed ones can get canceled. The rumored ones can get confirmed. I mean, it's a lot of fun over there at Lucasfilm. What do you guys think? Well, before you do that, I got one word that I think you're really going to like. Oh, well, you're saving them? No, you just jumped ahead. Oh, did I? <laughs> oh, I guess I should have waited until you were done. <laughs> so there's two more, really, technically, but... <laughs> See, that's what you got to do. You got to tell me how many there are. <laughs> I guess it would help if I actually read the articles. But but I did this time. I just guess I just didn't scroll down far enough. Okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> I'll make these quick. So one is supposed to be an animated project. You don't have to make it quick. People are used to three-hour shows from us, <laughs> so I think we're good. <laughs> Um, oh right, there is supposed to be another animated thing that they were working on. Well, there, wait, wait, isn't it? That's not confirmed. Well, we got two things. So one is uh, uh, got that Corona cough. Don't say that <laughs> in this, in this <laughs> enclosed Mr. room. Yeah, in <laughs> no. the enclosed room with no face mask. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, as long as Whitmer doesn't watch us, I think we're all right. I need some ray shields around here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The little, those like little plastic guards they put in the stores yep. or whatever. <laughs> uh, but you know, there there has been there are currently no new uh, TV series or movies um, on the way until season two of Mandalorian. Um, but some people are speculating that they might, you know, it might leave some openings for some animated storytelling. But the one that I really wanted to talk about, <laughs> and we probably will have fun with this one, Star Wars Detours. Oh, I think I heard something about Yeah, this. so it was originally announced at Star Wars Celebration in 2012. Detours comes from the minds of the creators of Robot Chicken and offers the audience more of a humorous take on the Star Wars mythology. So, you know, we were talking about it last time about all the different uh, Robot Chicken episodes that we love. They actually want to do a show specifically geared towards just nothing but Star Wars mythology in this from the creators of the Robot Chicken. Oh, that would be just... So that would be priceless. Completely cool. So They have to green light that immediately. So what makes Detour so interesting is that during a Reddit uh, AMA, co-creator Seth Green confirmed 39 episodes have been completed with more than 60 scripts having been finished. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's busy. <laughs> I guess. Well, they did announce this in 2012, so... Yeah. Well, that's good. But so, wait, I don't mean to jump ahead. ahead, but I could have sworn that Filoni had talked about some series that he was working on, and everybody thought that it was going to include the Rebels characters, but it's like not necessarily, although he did point out in some article that he would like to see a continuing story of those guys, but that's not necessarily what he's working on. He was kind of coy about it. Yeah. 
Well, then, of course, the final thing is the uh, uh, the High Republic Project Luminous. So, you know, people are speculating about, hey, those could be. This is still a rumor, though, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, because I was going to say, I mean, it it would we can, have to. We can't it has get the books. to. <laughs> well, I mean, besides the fact the books haven't even been released, and it looks like we're not going to get them for a while. The other thing is, is that I can't see this. Some era like this, I can't see it living solely in books and comics. No, no way. Maybe games. I mean, it's got to be. It's got to hit a screen. Some sort of screen. Bigger or, big or small. It's big or hit. small, animated, live action. It's got to be something. Yeah. Definitely. Now, if they were smart, they would do an animated series. But I thought that I was reading somewhere. I mean, I hate to keep going back to this. <laughs> You're probably like, dude, I get it. But I could have sworn that they were saying that it was going to have the same animation as like with the Clone Wars it had. Mm-hmm. And it was some series that... I don't know when it was going to take place, but there was definitely a follow-up series coming out, you know, maybe not in the next maybe. four or five months, but definitely like by next year or something. Yeah, I haven't heard much about it. I mean, I remember you said, I remember you mentioned that before, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe that's been kind of put on hold or. Well, and that's know. the thing. I mean, with the virus and everything, it, it could have been Yeah, and then, a lot of production and stuff has been put on hold. So, yeah, you know, we'll have to see. I don't know. But that's it. But that's it. That's it. Now, what do you guys think? Now that we have everything in totality, what do you what are you guys thinking about this whole schedule here? We got some confirmed, some rumored. I'm sure they'll swap places. You know, let us know in the comment section. Chat with us live, and Daryl may still be on. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But all right, what do we got now? You know, it's good time to fight. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time for Duel of the Fates. All right. All right, man. So this week. We always do that. <laughs> Every time like I watch these things back, it's like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we have this week, um, which ship would you rather be the captain of? The Millennium Falcon or the Ghost? Hmm. That's hard, actually. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, there's a similarity between the way they they look in a sense. I mean, the ghost is definitely taller, but they still have that like weird cockpit thing happening. I mean, I'm probably gonna go with the Falcon, and not because it's Han Solo ship, not because it's iconic and it's been in a gazillion movies. It's basically because it has, so it's designed for long-term staying. I mean, Lando designed the ship. Mm -hmm. So it has some of the comforts, and it's got what you need for, you know, it's not like an X-Wing or something, right? Yeah, it's pretty much like the conversion van. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. But what I like about it is in battle, it's still maneuverable, it's fast, you could say maybe the ghost might be a little bit more durable. At least it seems that way, but I I think it would just be clunkier. Hmm. You know, I mean, it's it's really tough to say because it also depends on who's piloting the thing too, but I don't know. I just think that overall, because I know basically the Falcon is like a YT freighter. Mm-hmm. It's like the YT-800 or something. Uh, I don't remember the classification of the ghost, like what kind of a ship it was, but because the Falcon is basically designed for smuggling, I just I think that overall, as far as being a no pun intended, well rounded ship, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean there are some downsides to it though. You know, you definitely need gunners and and things like mm-hmm. that. But I think that overall. That might be the one that I, I'd rather go for, even though it would be kind of awkward. To be honest, it would be a little weird, you know, oops, hit the, you know, as I hit the mic. But actually being off to one side, mm-hmm. well, I'm really surprised. That, and that was kind of a stroke of genius, at least as far as making a ship a little bit different. But in a practical universe, I don't know how it would be to be all the way on the left side Mm-hmm. You know, and just piloting it would be strange to me. <laughs> no, I, I, I get it. 
I think I will go with the ghost. Oh, a true battle. Yes. I'm going to go with the ghost. Um, I think the ghost is the cool thing about it is that it, it blends in like the Falcon sticks out to me. Oh yeah. So I think, well, kind it, of, I mean, it, the thing that's really weird about that though, is it, I mean, I know the YT other... series freighter. I mean, it's, it sticks out because you've seen it for like yeah. nine movies. Well, six <laughs> and well, seven <laughs> got to count solo. Right. You know, I think that it's really more the fact that it's an iconic ship. Mm-hmm. But you're right. It definitely does stick out more than the ghost does. Like the ghost, you know, I mean, every time that they like want to show, especially in the Rise of Skywalker, I'm like, oh, it makes an appearance. And I, I did see it the first time that we saw the movie, but it kind of blended in. Yeah. Like you can miss it pretty easy. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's one of those things that it, you can kind of blend in with a lot of different things. Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty fast ship. It has some of the st- uh, capabilities, like you know, you can sleep there. They have like bunk beds and stuff in there, and you can. Certainly, it's not as spacious as the Millennium Falcon, but I feel like it's, in some ways. Um, so I think the Millennium Falcon has more amenities, if you will. But I think you know, if it's got that chessboard. <laughs> What's that got? A, it's got a cape room. I mean, for crying's sakes. Well, so at I mean, least when Lando had it, who knows what it. Well, you know, it was converted into. But, you know, and I just think that, you know, I mean, the the Millennial Falcon, of course, has been quite beat up. It's got some, I mean, if you're getting it brand new, like Solo, okay, maybe. Um, but I think that um, the Ghost is, the Ghost is cooler to me because it also has that whole, like, detaching, like, you can actually put that shuttle that attaches into it. Oh yeah, I and so like about in that. case like you need to you know bail out or something like that, yep. you all can fit in that little shuttle and kind of it's almost like the Enterprise would really. Oh man, you know with the Enterprise too, they, you know that whole saucer section. Yeah, separation. separation. Yeah, man, I mean that was like something that they would use sparingly, but on the next generation, it was oh. like every other episode they were. Separate oh, saucer separation. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing they put that feature on the ship. You guys are using that like every week. <laughs> so I love the fact that, you know, the ghost kind of has its own like, um, like it has its own little system or whatnot. And it has its gunners and it has all the little different stuff. It could, it's pretty nice size. Well, that's they, what I'm saying. They're I mean, cargo like these truckloads of the like thing. stuff. I mean, it's, they're, I don't know if it's exactly a freighter or not, but I mean, they both kind of, have that freight like cargo capacity capacity i so, think the ghost for me simply because it's more designed for battle yeah without question where i think the the millennium falcon was never designed for battle it just no can. it's it's more like a it's, it's been modified. Like halfway between like a, a smuggler ship and a cruiser yeah it, it's kind of like yeah it's been modified so much and that's the cool thing about it is that how i modified the ship so much that it it has all these different capabilities. Well, to and it. that's the other thing too. You almost have to go by. Would you rather have the Falcon, oh. like say when Lando owned it, or after Han owned it for a while? See, it it's kind of a multi-headed question in a sense because of the fact that, like you said, it went through so many modifications. I mean, it went through a bunch of modifications from the time Solo owned it in the beginning to, say, Return of the Jedi. You know, and then further modifications afterward. You know, it's funny because when I've looked at the Millennium Falcon, like since I was a kid, you know, it's always had that little split in the middle. I thought it was always built like that. Yeah, me too. Until like we actually saw it in you know Solo, and it's actually that was actually kind of created by him doing the Kessel Run. I think it was, but it's kind of weird to me because that's perfectly cut out square. It's like. What would you hit that? Well, I mean, it just um, I'm just amazed that like that just didn't do more damage to the ship. Yeah, it's like what was there in the beginning? Yeah, like well, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like, something what was occupying that, that space? space. Yeah, so what was it exactly? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's again, it's one of those things that I think that you could really, depending on the day, it could go either way. And I, in order to really answer the question totally fairly, I would probably have to really. You know, but get guess, one of those encyclopedia things again, and either that, or you have to look at what are you using it for. Well, yeah, definitely. 
Definitely. Because, well, and here's another thing, too. I think as far as having a more military-like crew, I mean, it It almost seems like Slave 1 in that sense. Now, Slave 1's a very weird, different yeah, it's ship. Like, it's like a giant shoe. <laughs> yeah. You know, and when it lands, it almost like lands on its back, and then it, it mm-hmm. comes up, and then it flies forward, and it's tall, and it's... Yeah, it's very... It's kind of weird, but it... I always say it looks like a doorstop. That's what it looks like. <laughs> but if you look at some of the Clone Wars episodes when Boba Fett, um, Aura Singh, and all them were on it, mm-hmm. it's it's more designed for like a group of people to be... It almost has like a bridge. Yeah. And that's sort of like how the ghost is. It has an actual bridge, bridge yeah. versus a cockpit mm-hmm. that's not designed for more than you know two or three people. Yeah. Or four, I think, is the case of the Falcon. Yeah. But... That's where I think that the ghost has a little bit of a an advantage too. But again, and it it's like you said, you know, do you want to put a group of people in it? Or are you just looking for you and a co-pilot? I think that that's going to inform the decision too. Yeah. So I don't know. Let's we'll see. But what about you guys? You going ghost? You going Falcon? You know, let us know in the comments section below. You know, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, all right. Well, I guess it's time for our main topic. Yes, sir. What do we got from a certain point? I'll say it this week. <laughs> from a certain point of view. Okay, this is our main topic. This is where when you guys clicked on this because of the title of the show, that's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the point in the show where we talk about our main thing. So we got eight big questions about the Star Wars series. Yeah, so this kind of couples with what we were talking about earlier today. Yeah, I was going to say, they were very much related. Yeah. But now we're just going to, if I'm not mistaken, we're focusing on the Disney Plus series, right? Because yep. at first I was wondering about that. I did read the article <laughs> that, you, that you're referencing. Because at first it was like, big question about Star Wars series but it's like series is <laughs> <laughs> it's all these Disney plus series that have come out as is star Wars fashion have generated more questions than it's answered. <laughs> so what, what's question number one? Well, Obi want get more than one season. Oh yeah. We were talking about that earlier too. And again, I think that, I think it really depends on how much time they want to cover either per season or, or whatever. So from say episode one to eight or nine or 10 or how many ever, cause you know, some of these seasons go eight episodes, some of them go 10, some have even, even gone 12 for the live action. though, that seems to be like the, the cap. Usually it's eight, 10, 12, somewhere in there. So it's like how much time is going to transpire because you have somewhat of an expiration date when it comes to Obi-Wan. Sure. You know, you can't cover too much. I mean, on one hand, there's a lot of different things that you can cover. And certainly, like I said before, I think you could go up to about three seasons and tell some really cool stories. Because I think a lot of people honestly assume that Obi-Wan was just sitting around meditating, meditating yeah. waiting for Luke to get old enough that he can actually say, hey, man, um, you know, we got mm-hmm. to do this whole Jedi got, thing now. Got something I got to show you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, muscly arm. <laughs> so, I mean, basically, he was obviously doing a lot more than that, and I think that this is a great opportunity for them to show that. But again, how much do they really want to go into it? You could make the argument very easily that it could be a one and done. Mm-hmm. but you could also expand the stories enough and maybe cover more microscopic periods of time to where instead of stretching it over one season, you could stretch it over three. And you could especially do this if they use the whole trick that they've done to some degree in Rebels, but they really did this in the Clone Wars where they'd have like these three, four episode story arcs. Right, like so the Bad Batch or something. Yeah, like that. right. So you can have, or like that, crazy one where they had the droids that got lost and we followed them for like four episodes. But what you could do is you can have say like three or four major stories or adventures or whatever that Obi-Wan does 
but each one is like four episodes or something. Mm -hmm. So you can you can literally have it to where it's like two major story arcs per season. You know, do six of them. There's your three seasons. Hmm. Let's see what else do we have. <laughs> Guess I covered that one pretty good. You did. Oh well, how, alrighty then. How close will casting? How close will that casting Andor series get to Rogue One? <laughs> it's like unbeknownst to us, we answered all this stuff earlier in the show. Well, it says the show would take. Uh, so it does give the answer. The show oh, would take it? five pla- five years before the events of Rogue One. Okay, yeah, but what we were trying to figure out. Okay, so wait, there's th- we said there was nineteen before. in between Sith and and Hope, right? Yes. Okay. So basically, this is like fourteen years then after after Sith. So it's not really right in the middle, but it's maybe it's like late middle, early end. Mm-hmm. And again, I do think that there's somewhat of a lost opportunity there, but I can also understand too, because if they go more than five years before, they risk the whole idea that Cassian may be a slightly different character. I think what they want to do is they want to make sure that the events and everything that happened, he's still basically the same guy that we met in Rogue One, but they want to show more adventures. They want to show more development, more growth, Mm -hmm. maybe what led to some of his cynicism, things like that. Yeah, and it says, just like the Obi-Wan series will pick up presumably close to the events of Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, the Cassian Andor series could uh, end short right before Rogue One. Disney Plus didn't hand down a five-season uh, five order for the project and another Star Wars TV show set in the very same era that ended before Rogue One. So um, we shouldn't count on Cassian series doing it either as far as staying on too long. So I don't think, like I said, Cassian, I could see maybe going five seasons. Oh, yeah. Now, see, that's something that I think would almost be a no-brainer. Yeah, that one I could see going five seasons. Yeah, because with all the stuff that's happening during that time period, I mean, you would barely scratch the surface. And again, another thing that we didn't address is if they're only going to do like 25-minute, 30-minute episodes, Yeah, you know, then you're covering almost nothing. Yeah. So like, not- it would take you like four episodes just to get through one story arc. <laughs> exactly. You know, so this is another thing that we have to look at, too. Both of the Obi-Wan with Cassian, the rumored Ahsoka series, Mm -hmm. is not just how many episodes are we going to get. But the time in the episode. Yeah, what's the duration of each episode? And these are things that, quite honestly, I think need to depend on what the series is, you know, what character it's based on, all these things because I thought personally that the Mandalorian should have longer episodes. Definitely. And I think that the later episodes, like maybe the last two or three that were more like 40, 50 minutes. See, that's more what it should have been. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that I didn't really care for oh, yeah, definitely. in the Mandalorian is definitely. that I thought that they were a little too short, especially when you consider, as you pointed out, this is a brand new era in Star Wars. We've yeah, never, the landscape, yeah. Yeah, we've never basically covered the immediate aftermath of Return of the Jedi. The closest we've gotten is the Aftermath trilogy, which, of course, they are going to reference, it looks like, with this whole Boba Fett thing. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the Cassian Andor thing, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more excited for it than I was before definitely and speaking of boba fett when were the uh when would the mandalorian season two release footage it's one of the big questions yeah there's there's speculation that maybe we'll get it so season one i think came out in september and they released them in i think july or something like that so maybe if they follow suit it's coming out when october well say it says uh the disney plus series will return for a second season in october 2020 we can at least speculate or so, or so we can at least speculate. Season one premiered in November of 2019, and the first official trailer was released in late August. Mm. So with the second uh, full trailer, de- 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 uh, oh, then July then debuting in October. If season two follows approximately the same timeline, then the first trailer could reveal some new Mandalorian f- footage in July. 
That said, Disney Plus has already dropped some surprises. I wouldn't be shocked if the final episode of the Disney Gallery ends on a teaser. That would be cool. That would be cool. And actually, if they were smart, that's exactly what they would do. Absolutely. Because if people are invested in watching this whole little webisode documentary thing on the making of The Mandalorian to reward us yes. with a teaser trailer, it doesn't have to be more than 15 seconds. You know, just give us a little taste, just enough to make us, you know, not be able to wait until October, basically. I think that would be the smartest move. And they could still do a full-blown trailer in July if they want. And that's the thing that's funny. The Mandalorian, they don't seem to be screwing up that much. No, because Favreau and Filoni. Well, yeah, exactly. (laughs) See, and that tells you something, because we've long said... Put Favreau in charge of the whole thing or put Filoni even, Mm -hmm. you know, because Favreau's around. I mean, he can sort of guide him in the whole live action thing or whatever. Yeah, I think think Favreau would be good as a producer. Like make him like the executive producer, but then make Filoni the creative director. Well, that's it. I mean, they they could even keep Kathleen Kennedy as a studio head. Just let Filoni be the creative director. Put it up there with Bob Iger and just let her like look at Excel documents with all the money or something, and mm-hmm. just leave it at that. Yeah, I never really understood. I mean, I I I do understand in a way, but it's because she is. She's probably one of the best producers Hollywood's ever produced. But again. She's just not doing a very good job as a studio head. And this these are the kinds of things that I just go back and forth on. Like, she's just made some, I'm even though, I mean, it. she has made them billions. She's just really not handled the Star Wars franchise with care. And, and we've said this over and over and over that you have to, it's different. You can't treat it like it's any other franchise. Yeah. No, oh, Totally. All right, well, the next one was, we kind of just just finished discussing this, so we'll kind of skip <laughs> over that one, which is the whole uh, female-centric um, Oh yeah, Star Wars thing, but nothing really, there's no The related. Rose Tico series. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, she'll be in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one after that is, what Star Wars characters will appear in the TV shows? Like all of them? So... Um, <laughs> So, okay, so let's see. Although the first season of Mandalorian deliberately avoided connections to the movies it stood in, and it stood on its own, it doesn't seem that, it seemed to be the case for season two. And certainly. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, in the, even the case centered around the Obi Wan uh, series and Diego, Luna's, Cassie, and Andor, both of whom joined the Star Wars saga via movies. My Mothma has already been confirmed, and two others from the Rogue One, being Bail Organa and. Um, Oh, the well. There's also Devin. the dude from uh, Solo, though, right? That's what I was about to say. I couldn't. Is it Devon? No, it's um. <laughs> <laughs> we just said his name. I know. De- ah, him. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, let's see. We get Ahsoka Tano and Boca uh, Boca Tan. Yep. Yeah, there's a gang of them in the Mandalorian season two. I mean, there's a lot. And it's. And uh, probably Tamira Morrison is Boba Fett. Yep. The other dude, Timothy Oliphant, is the guy that has Boba Fett's armor. Yep. And then there's a, uh, let's see. Well, Ahsoka Tan, um, Ahsoka Tano and Boca Tan <laughs> are in the Clone Wars along with Boba Fett, um, are said to be coming to the Mandalorian season two. And the, Obi-Wan, and the Obi-Wan show is rumored to feature Hayden Christensen as well. Uh, the casting Andor uh, arguably has the most potential for movie characters thanks to the placement of the Star Wars timeline. So Yeah, we said that, I mean, we yeah. could even have Maul in there, too. Like I said, Leia, Maul. Leia, Maul. Um, geez. Mothma, of course, we got. Yeah, uh, Bale. It would be interesting. I wonder if Akbar would be around. Well, he could be. I mean, unfortunately, they either voiced him, died, but, um, I mean, hey, who knows? You could even make a case that that Obi Wan could be in there too. Yeah. Well, I probably- doubt very seriously they're going to do it, but hey, if they got you and McGregor already locked in, what's to say that he goes from Studio A to Studio B and makes an <laughs> appearance in Cassian? 
because they're going to be shooting probably around the same time. Well, yeah, and that's one of the things that you, the next big thing is open. When will Obi Wan series premiere? That's a very good question. So this is uh, an Obi Wan central project was rumored for years before finally being confirmed as a series that Disney Plus is uh, going to release. Ewan McGregor has been prepping to revise his reprise his role, and those rumors of cancellations provided to be unfounded. That said, McGregor himself confirmed some delays back in January. According to McGregor, the plan to start was to start shooting in August 2020 was bumped back to January 2021. So we'll have to wait a little bit longer for that show. Makes you wonder, though. They could. Uh, it might be tight, but they might be able to do a fall of 2021. But what's really going to be interesting, though, is that the fall of 2021, if they follow suit, should give us season three of The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. So it makes you wonder, like, are they going to then the spring of 2022? You know what I mean? Like, have different seasons. Are they going to have competing things at the same time? Like, are we going to have, like... Mandalorian, Obi Wan, all running at sure, the same like time. Sure, like maybe Mandalorian's released every Friday, Obi Wan's released every Wednesday, Cassian's mm-hmm. released every Monday. I mean, that's true. Yeah. They could they could do that to where it's keeping people watching. Yeah. But the other smart thing to do would be on the off season. So if Mandalorian ends, you know, say in well, it ended in December actually, then you can say in February pick up with another series and then in May pick up with another one and then you have October so you're staggering them throughout the year so you're never really without a Star Wars series for very long that's another thing they could do yep. that's a very good point very good point um, how much of the Cassian uh, and or Rogue One prequel has been completed so I remember you were asking about that a few moments ago yeah, um, so have they actually started shooting that then? So I was under the impression that they hadn't really started rolling on that yet. Well, let's see. Uh, then again, though, that was announced way before Obi-Wan was. Mm-hmm. In fact, that was actually announced not too long after Mandalorian was announced. Let's see. What do they say? The project was... Uh, this is called show prep, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Despite uh, casting seemingly uh, being ongoing as recently as mid-May, the casting Andor series set ahead of Rogue set ahead of Rogue One seemed to be most like most likely live action Star Wars, uh, likely a live action Star Wars series to debut after the Mandalorian. Announced back in twenty eight uh, November twenty eighteen, the project was able to begin production back in the winter of twenty twenty. And a 2021 premiere date seemed very possible. Unfortunately, the Cassian series, like many others, had to shut down production much earlier than intended. So, if they've already got production into it, they've already said the uh, the production was already in four weeks before the shutdown. That's what it was. So they were starting to do it, and then so it was in production already four weeks before. Yeah, which means they were shooting it then, mm-hmm. but they weren't that long into it. Right. Yeah, so it re- it's really going to be about when they can get back to work and when they could do what they need to do because obviously if they were only four weeks in a production, I don't know how many weeks they were taking to, to do all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think now that, you know, I think there's going to be... See, the one thing I don't want them to do, though, is because, of course, the with, due to the coronavirus, I don't want them, like, now that the... States are starting to open back up again. I don't want them to rush it. Yeah. And it sucks. <laughs> well, and that's that's it too. But so who was running the show on Cassian? Uh what's his I forgot his name. It's I wanna say it's like Gary something. Yeah, you're right. I can't think of his name because I have so many like different. That's the thing with all these different shows because they're releasing all these different directors and writers for all these different. Well, I remember shows. Deborah Chow was the one that's basically writing and directing the entire Obi Wan series. Yeah, yeah, that. that but makes it's a couple sense. of people though for uh, the casting Endor thing. Yeah, because it's like oh, another person who's doing who's doing like the action stuff, but then there's another person who kind of has the the spy background as far as telling those kind of stories, like those. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like a combination thereof. Well, and that should be, 
you know, that should be interesting. I mean, I yeah, think the that, writing part, I think, is going to be And I cool. think that the fact that they're splitting this up is also a good sign, which maybe means that they won't... Well, and think about it this way. If they're into production, it's already been written. Yeah. You know, I mean, granted, they could always do rewrites and make changes, but I don't think it's going to suck. I mean, even if they rush it, I'm, they could compromise the production a little, but I don't think they're going to do that. See, I would I would be more worried if they were still writing this stuff and they still yeah, had some deadlines that they wanted to meet and it's like, oh, hurry up and finish this thing or whatever. Then I would say like, yeah, yeah you know. That's true. Take your time. And I think, you know, with the, the production world stopping, you know, of course, you know, people are like out of work. So when it's green light to go, oh, everybody's going to be chomping at the bit to get back to work because it's like, look, <laughs> bills got to get paid. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The... The bonus ninth question is, where's my check? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think that's the biggest Star Wars series question. Yep. All right. And then there's more Star Wars animation on the way. So I think this is going to allude to your... Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't... I'm usually a lot more <laughs> sensitive to covering like every single thing in our main topic. But yeah, <laughs> I, I thought that Filoni or somebody had said that more animation was on the way. But let me ask this then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the audience can chime in too. Definitely leave a comment or, you know, chat. What animated series would you like to see next? I would actually, honestly, one thing I would love to see is it takes place during the same time period as The Mandalorian. But I want to see what, like, Han, Luke, and Leia are doing like those further like adventures, but in animation. Yes, yes, I absolutely agree. I would love to see because you can get pretty much the animated thing. And you know what's really interesting? And it, I just thought about this. You could almost, without making too many changes, you could almost do the Timothy Zahn seven, eight, and nine after, and still have the the storyline for for Force Awakens. yeah for the sequel trilogy yeah well that's what i'm saying and i think it's a huge because that's a huge gap and i think that's what i mean like there's 34 years between the end of return of the jedi and yeah the force awakens so you can do the whole thrawn thing you can do you know pretty much everything because remember that the timothy zahn trilogy actually did take place within two or three years or something after Return of the Jedi. I mean, it was in that time period. And the cool thing is, you still have Mark Hamill around. He can do his voice. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have someone, you know. Harrison Ford could do his voice if he agreed to it. Yeah, he could. Somebody can do a Carrie Fisher. Yep, somebody can do a Carrie Fisher. You still got Anthony Daniels who can still do 3PO. Sure. R2 is a bunch of beeps. And Chewie's a bunch of roars. So You got Billy D. Williams to be Lando. Yeah, you can have all the characters. I mean, actually, I never that's even thought about that. That's but what I'm can, saying. Like, you could really do you could a, do that whole storyline and not and not ruin the it, continuity for the Force Awakens and beyond. Exactly. And then now people get to see Luke ignite the green and do exactly. all those things. And then, so you still are getting that powerful Luke Skywalker. And now you can do it in animation, which is like limitless. Now, now you don't have to worry about like all the props and stuff. It's all done in animation. And that would be really cool. Well, yeah, because the last thing that we want would be Star Wars to be limited. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. But the thing that I find really interesting about that is that, so you have some people that talk about a live action Leia going forward. Like if you do a young Leia, get Millie Bobby Brown to play her, mm -hmm. which I could see that. But oh, in daughter. animation, yeah. But then that's my point. In animation, you can have, yeah. I mean, as long as you can get somebody to kind of sound like her, yeah. then you're good. And then you get around the whole further adventures of Leia thing because you don't have to have an actress replacing Carrie Fisher. Exactly. You're just having somebody voice the yeah. role, basically. And exactly. then it, it keeps her legacy intact. Mm -hmm. And people can still, you know, see Leia's strength and see how she's still princess leia as she moves on and yeah i mean and it's it's the perfect for those of us who actually wanted the zon trilogy to actually be seven eight and nine this is a way of giving it to us without necessarily changing or as some of these you know idiot clickbaiters out there say 
Like, oh, George Lucas is, you know, going to rewrite the sequel trilogy or something. I've actually seen that around. Yeah. And but see, that's my thing, too. Then it's like you still have so much, so much stuff that you can cover it. Because like you said, it's 30, like we said, it's 34 years. So it's like up until before Force Awakens. So it's like. Yeah, you're probably safe up until about five to eight years before Force Awakens. Or if you want to just cut it off at an even 10, mm-hmm. you're probably good up to that point. Yeah. And you can literally do Heir to the Empire, you know, Last or Dark Force Rising and Last Command. You could do those stories all within, say, a 10 year period. Because I think they actually take place like one after the other. You can have that, and you're still like 20 years away mm-hmm. from Force Awakens. So there's still time for Luke to be disillusioned with the Force and all that. There's still time, yep. you know, for things to be dormant. For Han Solo to decide and freak out that he wants to go back to smuggling and and for the the new new republic to fall apart and all this stuff, you could do that. Definitely. Yeah, I don't I don't actually know why I or somebody didn't think about that before. <laughs> Might have to write Disney. Yeah, I mean that's like that's something I really want now. <laughs> I hate Filoni. I didn't even want it before. Now I really want it. <laughs> Watch you get a job at Lucasfilm. <laughs> yeah, right. I would so envy you. I would so envy me too. <laughs> hey, at least I'd be able to do the podcast still. Well, maybe. You'd probably be too busy coming up with stories. Well, the other thing is, is that you know they would be like, "Okay, hey, you can't talk about that. You can't talk about that." Yep. You know, I'd have to sign an NDA before every episode. <laughs> so, are the was that? The eight big questions. Yes, sir. All right. Well, what about you guys? Was that was that um, all the questions that you had, or do you guys have more than eight questions? Or what did you think about these eight questions? You know, give us your answers and your interpretations to that below. In the description, you will actually find a link to this article that we referenced, so you can go back over it and then just let us know what you guys think. Leave it in the comment section below. All right. I think it is time for one of my favorite segments, is it not? All right. It's a little segment that we like to call Clear Your Mind. That's right. This is where we answer your questions that you guys have submitted. Usually when we are live on this channel, of course, we're having conversations with you guys, hopefully like we are tonight, you know, the whole time. But we do have people that through our Twitter, Facebook, at Head to Head SW, which you can reach us on our social media, also Instagram. We do have people submit us questions every week that we answer during this segment right here. So who do we have first? Oh, uh, the first question comes from Beck Luderman. His question is, with Mace Windu and Palpatine being master swordsmen, do you think that Palpatine really lost the duel or was it a fake out? See, now this is something that's that's funny because we bring this up from time to time mm-hmm. when we're discussing that whole scene. And I still contend that Mace probably could have defeated him, except for the fact that I do realize that Palpatine was faking him out. You, you know, know that to be true? Well, I mean, Lucas basically alluded to that on his commentary on Revenge of the Sith. The whole idea was part of the seduction of Anakin was that he had to make the Jedi, because remember, the whole idea was to make the Jedi seem evil. Anakin was already on his way to thinking that anyway. Yep. So now Palpatine basically does something that pretty much solidifies it. Yeah, I mean, I just watched, you know, like I told I was watching Revenge of the Sith today. And I was just like, really just like wanted to focus on Palpatine. And man, like, (laughs) well done, man. I mean, that guy (laughs) is just like, wow. I mean, because he really did like how he positioned everything was just perfect. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like like he already knew how it was going to end before it happened. Well, and even when you look at that duel specifically, you know, he knew to keep the lightning going, to disfigure his face, to make it seem like the Jedi attacked him and all that. And, you know, he. Well, I think I think the whole the biggest thing and this is the, the key was that. 
you know, the Jedi follow follow a code. And, you know, watching that whole scene that took place between Anakin and Obi-Wan when they were in the corridor when basically Obi-Wan told him the Jedi Council kind of wants you to spy on him. It was that scene right there. And if you see the scene where he kind of goes off on Padme when, you know, Padme is basically saying like, well, you know, you have the chancellor's ear. You could just tell him and maybe. And he was like, don't ask me to like he kind of went off because he's already under enough pressure. Like, I'm tired of people trying to get me you, to use me against my friend and mentor and mentor. You know, don't so, forget, yeah. he was like a mentor to him. He was basically the only father figure he ever really had. Yeah. Other than Qui-Gon, maybe. Yeah, and so I think when you really see that, you really truly understand. And he even says it. He was like, you know, because Padme made a statement. She said, what if we're fighting the wrong battle? Like, what if we're yeah. on the wrong line? And he was like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, well, what if we would think what we're fighting for is actually the wrong thing? And like, we're fighting for a a belief that no longer that the Republic no longer believes anymore, but we still believe it. They just don't. So then of course, Obi I mean, Obi-Wan, but Anakin's like, now you sound like a separatist. And so it's like, when you start seeing all those conversations, so when it finally gets to that point, when Anakin sees Mace about to kill Palpatine and he's like, well, he has to stand trial. He's trying to remind him of the Jedi code. Mm -hmm. And one of the higher officers of the Jedi Council is like, nah, he's too dangerous to be left alive. So he's just going to kill him. So you have that. Of course, he's already angry with Mace anyway from earlier because he wanted to become a master. He's like, how can I sit on the council but not be granted the rank of master? And I think Palpatine knew that that was going to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think so, he was engineering a lot of this stuff. And that's, that's why he wanted him to be on the council, because he knew that was going to frustrate him even more. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, OK, we'll grant you a seat at the table. But and the only reason why we're granting you the seat at the table, because we want you to sit with Palpatine later. <laughs> yeah, because we want you to do this shady. Thing. Yeah. So it was like we a little quid pro quo, but we're not going to grant you the rank of master. So it's like, don't get any bright ideas. And so well, like, and Anakin's like, like infuriated by that. Mm hmm. So now when he sees like, so he's constantly seeing that the Jedi are breaking their own rules. That's kind of like where, because even when you go back to when he was about to kill Dooku and, uh, you know, and of course Palpatine was like, you know, do it. And he kills him. And he's like, well, I shouldn't have done that. That's not the Jedi way. He's like, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he cut off like, your arm you wanted retribution he's like remember what you told me about those sand people you know so it's kind of like he knows what should be done but then like he's constantly seeing people break their own laws and so at that point he's just like okay you know the Jedi like you said like he looked at the Jedi now it's like okay well they're just as bad as everybody else but I still think though Mace I mean, I know Lucas, if Lucas says it, then that's what it is. But I'm just, in my opinion, I really do think Mace. Well, even if you just go by the the thing, because I've I've long been one of those guys that like, look, Mace, Mace was doing very well. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, because what was really funny about it is that Mace, if Anakin hadn't been around to basically interfere, mm -hmm. I don't think Mace would have won. Because even though, granted, yes, Anakin did chop off his hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you saw when Palpatine was all like, oh, well, now I don't have to pretend anymore, and now I'm going to unleash my full power, Mace could not have stood against him. I don't know. Not a full volley of lightning like that. I mean, once again, I, I really don't know because, I mean, you look at... The other thing is, is that he was faking anyway because even during the lightsaber battle... It seemed kind of matched, but remember, this is all a show for Anakin. If Anakin hadn't been a factor in it, it would have been a little bit different. I don't. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I really don't know. And the reason why I say that is because when you look at Mace, he's the second. I mean, you got to think about it, he's the second most powerful Jedi around. That's and you got to look at like okay, but by how much, like compared to Yoda, like okay, is it like this much or is it like this much like we don't know but all we can say is he's the second in command he's the highest you know he has he's the most powerful next to yoda so i'm thinking like if yoda can actually deflect this 
why wouldn't Mace be able to? I think he's equally as powerful enough to do so. The other thing is, is that Mace created his own lightsaber style, which actually used the, the dark side. So while Palpatine was a master at all the forms of dueling that the that the Jedi used, Mace having his own, he wouldn't be privy to. So that's the reason why I would say like Mace probably would have beaten him. Yeah, but that. he wasn't really has he wasn't struggling against him. Plus Yoda, Yoda could actually block force lightning with his hands, which none of the other Jedi can really do. They all have to use their lightsabers to do it. That we saw. But I well, mean that, and that's that's pretty much And the only reason why Yoda did it because he didn't have his lightsaber in his hand at that time, so he had to. But he can also like deflect it back, and that's known that Yoda can only—he's the only one that can do that. Yeah, and I I agree with that. But even if and the f- even he was like, I mean, you know, granted, if they had been on, and we had talked about this a lot of times before, that if they had fought on flat surfaces, Yoda probably would have bested them mm-hmm. eventually. Mm-hmm. But again. That's tough to say because one of the things that Lucas pointed out in his commentary is at this point, the dark side's stronger. So it's really tough to say. I mean, I would say that when you give all the evidence and stuff like that, that I don't think that I think Mace would have put up a a tremendous battle. And he's certainly the only one who would have had a chance other than Yoda against him, Mm -hmm. which is, again, why I don't understand why well okay so at first when mace did fight him it's like i'm answering my own questions here (laughs) when mace first fought him it's true they were just there to arrest palpatine Mm -hmm. you know they find out that he's a sith lord i don't think they expect him to to flip over a table and start (laughs) lightsaber dueling you know but it just makes sense that it would have been more tactically advantageous if yoda and mace had gone you know (laughs) Just yeah. like if if Yoda and Obi Wan had gone and fought and defeated Anakin and then gone together, I mean, granted, Obi Wan being Obi Wan probably would have been down in the first three minutes of the battle, but still, I mean, you know, there's there's more of a chance that okay, yeah. first you go take care of the apprentice and neutralize him, then you go take care of the master. But again, I think it's a case of the Jedi just overestimating and being overconfident in their own abilities. Well, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, from Yoda's perspective, I can understand why, like, why would I need to shut up, dude? I sent the second strongest guy, plus, like, and the whole, like, half the council was there. <laughs> like, and they got wiped out in, like, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. They didn't even, they barely they lasted swung. the table flip. Yeah, they didn't even swing, basically. I mean, they barely ignited their sabers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, Sia C-10 is gone. You know, it's like, geez. And you know, I mean, if Anakin saw that, he'd be like, okay, and, and I'm being denied being a master? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. You guys got these guys, like, you know. And that's a good question. Do you think Anakin would have been able to, being as powerful as he is, this is before his pre-lava. <laughs> right. Do you think he would actually been able to actually hang with Palpatine? Or would have been Are you talking about in a duel? Mm-hmm. Yeah, see that that's kind of interesting too, because first of all, Anakin probably certainly thought so. Because as soon as he found out he was a Sith Lord, he's like, up, oh, ignites yep. his saber and he's about to arrest him. Which actually was very unexpected when I first saw the movie. <laughs> and I thought it was incredibly cool. Well, yeah. I'm like, dude, you know, he's this guy's like a father to him. As soon as he finds out, oh, wait, you're a Sith Lord? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to basically kill you unless you come with me. Well, the funny thing is what, what was even more impressive is the fact as as powerful as Anakin is and as powerful as, as, powerful as Anakin is and Palpatine knows it, he never drew his saber at all. He just kept talking. Well, and that, that that's kinda, actually, that's that what I was getting That kind of shows some at. power. <laughs> that's what I was getting at. What I was getting at was... Palpatine was just like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to try to talk this guy off the leg. He wasn't even really freaked out at all, Mm -hmm. like not even breaking a sweat. And remember that when Palpatine and Yoda were fighting, he said eventually he would be more powerful than either one of us. Mm -hmm. Anakin wasn't there yet. He wasn't there yet. Because if you look at it, even Dooku gave Anakin a good run for his money. True. And Palpatine's like, 
immensely more powerful. True. You know, Palpatine was pretty much only Yoda would have been able to match him. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, kudos to Anakin for not really caring. He's yeah. just like, you know what? I mean, <laughs> oh, you're this Almighty Sith Lord. Yeah, all right. Um, well, see, that's I'm a, gonna arrest you. Well, see, that's the thing though. It's like when you're a Sith Lord, because you gotta think about it, like, all right, he beat Dooku. He was a Sith Lord. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> you know that's I mean? true. Yeah, so he didn't like, really have the. Okay, I mean, I will give you that. He didn't really. He didn't understand. Damn, like there's levels to this. <laughs> yeah, the context. Yeah, it's like, dude, near. Okay, racing against you know a Corvette is is one thing. Racing against a Lamborghini is another. <laughs> it's like it's two different type of uh, engines you're dealing with here, buddy. So, well, that's what I thought was really cool about the final season of the Clone Wars when. You know, it was like, um, I think it was like Anakin. Well, it was the whole like Django Fett thing. And, uh, you know, basically when Mace was recounting to him, you know, like, oh, yeah, I killed his dad. That's why this kid's mad at me. Mm -hmm. And then there was another point where they had referenced Maul and Anakin was like, oh, yeah, he was the one that, you know, killed Qui-Gon or whatever, and Obi-Wan fought and killed him. Mm -hmm. So I thought those were kind of cool that Anakin was aware of some of these different Sith Lords because I actually had to think back to the Phantom Menace. I'm like, I think he was told to stay in the cockpit before the doors opened and Maul was basically exposed to where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon were like, okay, we'll handle this. You guys go and... And do your thing. I don't think Anakin was there mm. to see them all. So I don't think he was ever really aware of it. I mean, I'm sure, you know, after a while, obviously Obi-Wan probably, you know, it's like, hey, man, where's Qui-Gon? Well, about that. got some news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got a promotion. I got a promotion. I'm your master now. Qui-Gon, this father figure that you really like, yeah, he's gone. That was kind of a bad day. Yeah. You know, you could tell. He didn't look too happy when he had that little Padawan haircut and he was just like kind of brooding and <laughs> well, yeah, scowling, you know. It's kind of like. He got a whole haircut and he got this stupid little braid hanging well, out. Well, he, he, he got the stupid Padawan haircut. And then at the same time, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, the guy that you love so much, yeah, he's dead. And, you know, you and I barely get along, but I'm going to train you. <laughs> it's kind of. Like, yep. Just wasn't a good day My for him. Girlfriend's gone on. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know, I mean, pretty much, you know, you're ripped away from your mother and just wasn't a good time for him. He did blow up a station though. He did. And he was excited about that. That's yes. true. That is true. But I mean, it's a, it actually is a good question. And these are some of the things that again, if they do continue writing more new canon novels that explore some of these different facets, because they have gone back occasionally, particularly in the Thrawn series, where they reference young Anakin. And there was also, um, I think there was some reference to him even in Tarkin. Mm. So, I mean, there's, you know, they sort of go all around it, but it'll be interesting. All right. All right. Who's the next person? The next question comes from Anderson G. His question is, can Jedi prevent getting force choked? <laughs> it's funny because there's an old canon explanation to that, and I'm not really sure how they're handling it in new canon because Maul was force choking the crap out of a lot of Jedi. So it's one of those things that the way that old canon explained it was that a more powerful Jedi or Sith could force choke a less powerful one. Because the original explanation was that particular power didn't work on force users. So if you were a force user, you could just sort of... Release yourself. Yeah, I mean, it just wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't work. Then they started going, okay, if you're more powerful than the other, then it, it could actually work. So Dooku was more powerful than Obi-Wan then. Yeah. Because, like, in 
Sith, he definitely like lifted him up and force choked him. Yeah, you talking about during their duel? Yeah, when it was like they were first uh, after they res- rescued the Chancellor, and it was like that one they were on that yeah, landing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he kicked Anakin back, but he lifted him up, and then he after that he threw him across the room. Yeah. So, I've always heard that it was like okay, if and depend- Palpatine ended up force choking Vader at one point. Oh wow! That was in a novel. Now I. <laughs> that's funny to even hear that because like I know it's like Vader's thing yeah exactly like that that's my thing I mean usually what what Palpatine would, would use is the lightning oh no right. he would use the lightning to like kind of short and screw with his suit and it's kind of like remember or yeah or shut it off there was one point I think Lords of the Sith where he just shut it off yep it's like man you might want to like you know make sure there's no bite the just well, Don't put a power button on that thing. Well, that's know? why Vader eventually started building in like safeguards against oh, yeah. that, like surge protectors or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, like, that'd be the like, little UPS or something. Oh I mean, yeah, I'd be ordering that off would Amazon. be the first thing that I would do. <laughs> it's like knowing it's like okay, I'm in this suit, and if this suit malfunctions, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, the first thing I'm doing is making sure that that's never going to happen. Yeah, I need some plenum cable in here. Mm-hmm. I need fire protected. <laughs> yeah, all of it. But I, yeah, but the fuck with the force though, I think. I've heard that it's like, okay, depending on how powerful a person is, one, but the other is like their focus. If they're like trying to do too many different things in the force. Oh, well, yeah. Like I mean, their concentration. Right. Like they they can't, can't concentrate or whatever. Yeah. It's like then, you know, you kind of slip one in. But then again, it was almost like one of those things where you know how the force, uh, um, oh, what's the power even called? The, the Jedi mind trick. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't work on anybody with a strong mind. And right. so the whole theory was that force choking wouldn't work on somebody with a Who's, certain level of power in the force. Right. But then again, Obi-Wan was pretty powerful in the force. Yeah, he was on the council. Yeah. Which was cool to actually to see him sit in a chair. Like, yeah, I, I know. I, I forgot I know. that he actually sat I know. in a chair, it's, and I was just like... Well, it's one of those little details that blows by you. Like, there's all kinds of cool little stupid Easter eggs or whatever mm-hmm. in the movies, and you're kind of like, oh, yeah. You know, in retrospect, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, you just forget about it. Like, I really thought it was cool that they referenced Quinlan Voss in, in Attack of the Clones. Mm-hmm. Or no, Revenge of the Sith. And it's not a big deal, but... Especially when you read the whole novel about him and Asajj and, you know, how that whole thing goes down. Yeah. It's just kind of a cool little thing. And there's all kinds of just Nuance. things that are, are not. Nuggets. yeah. Yeah, they're like little nuggets. They're not anything overwhelming, but something like what you just brought up where Obi-Wan's sitting in the council chair. It's, mm-hmm. Brings warm feelings to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's also funny, like, when Anakin's all trying to, like, get up in Mace's face and Obi-Wan's just sitting there like... Mm-mm. <laughs> not today like Anakin don't do it <laughs> well yeah and I think that you know Mace was definitely more the disciplinarian oh, tough yeah. love guy you know he's <laughs> definitely he's even saying the whole time like I don't think he's cut off with <laughs> yeah I mean if they had actually listened to Mace in the first place I'm sure you know on his way down handless he was probably thinking like I told you see <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Sam Jackson, I told you, mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, I I think it is a combination thereof. I think it's how powerful you are, and then I think it just depends on where your attention is in the force. You know, like if you're if you're completely tuned in and you're like present within the moment, then yeah. But if you're like kind of distracted by things, well, and that's the thing. You know, when they started this whole new canon thing. That was one thing they didn't really address. And the way that it's been working is if new canon doesn't contradict it. The old still kind of. applies. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah, there's certain things where the old would still apply. And then there's other things where it just isn't explained yet. Like they'll say, okay, old canon said this. That's not true, blah, 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 whatever. But they've never actually established a new rule in the new canon so you're kind of going, okay, you're telling me that this no longer exists. But you didn't replace it with But anything. you didn't replace it with anything. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah. 
And now what you'd have to do is you would have to almost go back to the movies or something that is canon and just try to look for examples that maybe if there isn't a direct reference, you can go, well, okay, based on X, Y, and Z. And again, it's going to take fans like us or even more super fans than us to even want to go through all that. But then again, I guess we're the type of people that would be, well, I wonder if somebody can, for-, you know, I mean, well, I mean the casual the, movie fans not thinking this stuff. But I mean, like, you got to look at things like even like, even though it's not force choke, though, it's like, you know, force powers work on them because it's like, look at, okay. Well, the telekinesis thing when you force push somebody. Yeah, because or- Yoda did it to Palpatine. Sure. Oh, flipped, I mean, he man. really gave it to yeah, like him. The, man, that was, was like that's still ultimate. one of the man. freakiest moments to me in the whole saga. It's yeah. like when he just like force pushed him and Palpatine like flips head over heels. Well, the funniest thing about it is like after <laughs> that's after he hit Yoda with a bolt of lightning. Oh yeah, and Knocked Yoda's him eye like a bowling pin. But Yoda's eyes when he woke up was like, okay, like <laughs> you can tell that's what he's saying. He's like, okay, so Off he, the gloves are yeah. So when he shoves him back. And the funniest thing is, like, you know, Palpatine's socks are, like, all in the air. <laughs> That's what made it so funny to me, because he's like, ah, and his feet are, I mean, and, you know, oh, Palpatine yeah. had to be freaked out, because that's never happened to him before. Never. <laughs> like, he probably Ever. never. In a million That's years. why it was after that that he was like, oh, I'm out. Yep. <laughs> he's like, I'm, and that's when Yoda's like, like, you know nah, what? He was uh, pulling a Grievous on that one. Like, yeah. okay, I'm not winning this, you know? <laughs> That's why Yoda's like, nah, mm-mm. stay. <laughs> it's like, oh, little green friend, huh? <laughs> right. Well, because the other thing that I thought was like the coolest was when he just like flicked his hand and just sent the royal guards, like knocked him out, you know, oh, against man. the wall. Yeah. That was like, that's when you knew things were going to get pretty, oh, yeah, pretty was, crazy. Well, when he saw as he walked in, yeah, it, they turned and saw him down there and they tried to. They could even like raise their spears and he just like, nothing. Yeah, bye. And the thing is, is that. Especially at that time, because, I mean, this is still during, you know, this is all pre-Disney and everything. But what was interesting about that to me was the fact that, you know, in in the canon novels, or it, or at least in the licensed novels, like, Lucas, he kind of cherry-picked what he made canon back then. So not everything that was in the expanded universe was canon, but some of the stuff was. Well, one of it was the Royal Guards were like, extremely good, cunning, fearsome warriors. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys were... The top of the top. You know, I mean, they were right up there with Jedi and Sith, basically, or at least very close to it. And so the fact that Yoda just dispatched them like it was nothing, Yeah, that was kind of a big deal if you followed the old canon Mm -hmm. at the time. So, Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I think that does it for us today. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it... It's, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because I've, I've gotten so used to the live thing now that <laughs> I really wish that I could go back and, and, you know, that I had time to participate in tonight's chat. But then again, I guess if I had time to participate in tonight's chat, would have just had a live show. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, normally I like to say, you know, well, if you're watching the rebroadcast, well, everybody's watching the, the rebroadcast <laughs> this week. Yep. So the good news is that next week, our June 5th episode, I think it's June 5th, that we'll be back, we'll be live, but you'll have to bear with us because on June 12th, we're probably going to have to do another one of these pre-recorded things because I'm going to be up on another job assignment. You know, usually we try to... Friday nights seem to be okay usually, but just lately, some things are getting in the way. So there'll be another pre-recorded thing like this week, but again, still be able to chat live, still be able to do everything. Um, but next week, like I said, we will be live on this channel and, of course, on Twitch and Facebook like we are every week. So hopefully you guys will be able to join us then. Until next week. I'm Eric Vansel. I'm Daryl Sanders. May the Force be with you. Always. Head to Head, a Star Wars podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, at Head to Head SW. Submit your questions for our next show. Visit our official website at Head to Head SW Podcast.com. Until next time, may the Force be with you. Always. Always.